Hello, friends. Welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. Uh, welcome to a code stream where, where we're going to write some code. Um, that's it. That's the, that's the plan. Write some code. What is it going to be? I don't know. We'll figure that out. Welcome to the show. Yes. I had a haircut last time, but I, I don't stream as often, so I feel like there are some of you that have not seen my haircut. New camera, new haircut. <laughs> Welcome to the show, everyone. Coding Canuck, thank you for those bits earlier. Lots of support this morning. Thank you, Coding Canuck, with 100 bits. And uh, Type Styles with that Twitch Prime sub, thank you very much. We're going to write some code. Hey, what's up, Acid Spark? I feel like it's it's been a while. It's been a while for a lot of people because um, I'm just not streaming as often. I'm hoping that I'm going to stream Monday morning. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. So I'm premiering an old live stream on YouTube. Uh, hey, WYT, thank you very much for that, uh, resub, but, uh, oh, hey, uh, re235, thank you also for that resub, hi, hi, um, this is exciting, the Streamlabs bot now actually sends messages in a YouTube premiere, it's never done that before, um, and that's great, it provides links and, and context and stuff like that, <laughs> What's up, Greg? It's a lot, a lot of great old faces I haven't seen in a while. Thanks for being here. I've been dealing with life, haven't been able to watch. Yeah, yeah no worries. No worries, Acid Spark. Thank you for dropping by at least today. Hopefully, uh, hopefully things work out. And hey, Excavator, thank you for that sub. Very much appreciated. Uh, lots of other resubs, though. Uh, McBelly Shelf with that four month resub. Danger Mouse with a four month Twitch Prime resub. Greg with the resub who says, just in time. Uh, funny Dude with the six month resub. Refactor with that seven month resub. Danielle with the three month Twitch Prime resub. Dehue with the three month resub. David Snyder who says, first stream, I've made it in a while. But. Seven month resub. Fight also with the seven months. Bob with the seven months. Uh, WIT with that five months. And uh, Greg with the seven months. Re with the four months. I appreciate you all. That was a lot of support. Uh, welcome to the show. Um, is everyone having an okay day? Can we just get some smiles in the chat? <laughs> the cutest man on earth. I, I feel like some people would disagree with you. Um, but um, it's Friday. It's Friday. Yeah, yeah. Smiles in the chat. Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> and thank you, Unfair, for that, that resub. I appreciate you. Oh, no, Mark. Mark says they co po tested positive for COVID. Hey, you're welcome for the positivity. Hopefully it all works out. Um, yeah. Uh, my, my thoughts are with you. <laughs> and what's up, uh, Costas? First time here. Very cool. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. <laughs> not not to COVID. Thumbs up to Bob. And anybody else giving a thumbs up. <laughs> awesome. Um, let's let's play a drop game. Oh wait, is it Friday the thirteenth? Oh my goodness. We should do something for Friday the thirteenth. And hey, Bob Head. Thank you for that Twitch Prime sub. Wait, why is it not here? It must have been an upgrade? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um what do I think about C sharp? It's pretty cool. It is Friday the thirteenth. I don't know. You all, you all think on that. What should we do for Friday the thirteenth? <laughs> thank you very much, procrastinating, watching CJ for that six month resub. Last day at work. Time for a change. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, excavator. I saw I saw you all talking about this a little bit earlier. Uh, would I be down for a quick explanation of j objects in JavaScript? I'm learning prototypes coming from C and I can't find a video on it. I don't know if I've really ever talked about the prototype before. I don't know how relevant it is in modern JavaScript development. Honestly, honestly. <laughs> um, we could maybe talk about it, though. Do something with SQL. That's pretty scary. That's funny. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you can get transcripts from Twitch. Uh, maybe you can. I haven't looked into it. Um, Regardless, let's play the drop game. If you're here, type exclamation mark, drop me. Your avatar is going to fall from the sky. And um, if it lands in the garden, you'll get your name on the screen. But Acid Spark says, do something based on unlucky tropes, like black cats or broken mirrors or ladders. That could be fun. Whoa! Look at all the drops. I almost spilt my invisible water. <laughs> well, I, yeah, so the hacker is saying it's archaic now that ES6 added the class keyword. I mean... The thing is, the class keyword just hides the fact that it's putting methods on the prototype. It's syntactic sugar. Like, technically, they're still on the prototype. Uh, but yeah, great drops, everyone. Oh, that's a good one. Who's that? Who's that? Uh, additivity. <laughs> great job. And art libitum. That's a, that's a, look at that. 
Look at that drop. Great drop. <laughs> Water is wet. Very much agreed. And thank you, Ozma. And thanks for that host, Mr. Demon Wolf. Thanks for being here. And George, with that tier one sub, another month. <laughs> oh, wait. Wait, wait. That was that was Kabanks that said another month. I guess I missed it. I'm Random notifications are not coming through. And it's not nice. But yeah. Um, here's what we need to do. We need to manage the request queue. Hey, Faraday Academy, thank you very much for that raid. Um, welcome, raiders. We're just getting started. We are just getting started. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> and Mike Broody, thank you very much for that two-month resub. Yeah, uh, Leftmost Cat says, I think understanding the prototype is always useful, but not necessary to get classes working in a basic sense. For sure. And uh, maybe maybe we'll talk about it. I don't know. We'll take a, we'll do a poll. <laughs> uh, but what's up, Mr. Jim Wolf? Welcome, welcome. Uh, love to relax in your stream after a long day of work. Well, I'm, I'm glad it's relaxing enough. And Fantasy Teapot, thank you for that four-month resub. Fries Day. Wait, are you going to, like, Fries Electronics? Because that sounds fun. <laughs> Fries Day? <laughs> and Fantasy Teapot, thanks for the sub as well. Um, I guess, I don't know if I, that popped up on my screen. Am I doing the Coding Game Fall Challenge? No, I didn't plan on it. Um, but we might play some just Clash of Code today, Coding Game. Raphael! Thank you for the 100 bits. Your auth series with Tony helped me a lot. That's good to hear. Friday the 13th. 13th hour, 13 minutes, 13 second stream. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not opposed to this. I, I'm not opposed to streaming for a long time today. Let's go. Uh, any interest in the Apple Silicon Max? Not sure what you mean by that. Yeah. Um, I can take a look at this later, Razor. Um, I need to catch up on Discord. <laughs> Uh, like I mentioned, I'm probably going to stream on Monday, which means I'm potentially going to have more time next week to like catch up and stuff like that. Uh, I do know somebody who stutters. Um, one of my best friends stutters. Yeah. Uh, technically water isn't wet. <laughs> uh, we could do this in the program. We talked about this last time, like the, this keyword and Hey, Jay, get it. You thank you for that Twitch primary sub. Um, I'm not, I'm not opposed to it. Yeah, yeah, what's up, uh, Absence of Nunchi? Um, it's a, the, I would say the coding key, uh, community is a decent size. You, you can see there are over 300 people watching me. Um, there's the live coders team, which I'm a part of. Um, this has 174 people, people on me. it. Um, uh, and all, all of the, all of these people live, uh, write code. There are a few other, uh, coding teams as well. Um, there's also uh, Only Devs. Uh, I think it was founded by the Primogen. And you can check them out. Um, there's also Poggrammers. Pog? Poggrammers. Pog I think this was either founded by Anthony Wright's Code or Vape Juice Jordan. People in the chat probably know, but you can check them out too. Um, and. Can we apply to these teams? You can definitely, like, some, they have some requirements. I'm not sure about programmers or only devs, but um, I would just reach out to, like, the, these are smaller teams, so I, you could reach out to these people directly and see how to apply. But yeah, 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 um, people live code on Twitch. It's a thing. It's a thing. <laughs> how do I get my mustache to look like that? You know, I don't think I've ever talked about this on stream, um, but I use this. The she boss. It's been a while. Thank you very much for that gifted sub. But uh, so, growing up, I was a punk rocker, and as a punk rocker, I had crazy hair, and this was the stuff to get your hair to stick in crazy hairstyles. But it works wonders on a pointy mustache. <laughs> but that's that's what I use. Um, yeah. What are we doing? We're gonna code. I don't know. I I I just. It's a generic title. We'll figure it out. We got to say hi to everybody, catch up, and then um, uh, we'll figure out what we're going to do. We, we might do something about this in the prototype. People are asking about that. That could be fun. We'll probably play Clash of Code. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was a punk rocker, too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and thank you for that resub, the Shiba. Seven months. It's a long time. Um, yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, Wooden Plier says it. One's a punk rocker, always a punk rocker. I think the, the thing about me is, um, uh, I mean, so yeah, I, I, I definitely still have a punk rock mentality. And then also I learned 
being out in the world that if you want to uh, have an effect on the system or take down the system, you need to work within the system. That's one of the biggest life takeaways, I think. Um, <laughs> yeah, but welcome, everyone. Oh, no. That's unfortunate to hear, Acid Spark. Yeah. It's good that you're getting tested, but I hope it, I hope it goes okay. Yep, I've been working from home, I mean, since the pandemic started. Uh, but even before that, I was allowed to do like a few days a week. Logic, Husky, thank you for that sub. Much appreciated. Um, okay, I gotta catch up. I'm like a few minutes behind on chat. That's, thoughts on Mac OS Big Sur? I haven't even looked into it. I'm still running Mojave on this MacBook. Hey, no, no worries, John. John, you have given so much to the channel uh, over the past few months. I really appreciate you. Don't even, don't even sweat it. Don't even sweat it. I appreciate you. Thank you for for being here. Um, oh, that could be cool, Sequel Gordster. Um, you can definitely get the transcripts from YouTube. That might be a place to start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mac OS, not sir. <laughs> Big Sur? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah. All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna scroll, scroll, scroll. And uh, Shebza, thank you very much for that sub. Oh, for the gifted sub. Very cool. Yeah. It was Anthony Wright's code. Very cool. Very cool. The secret to CJ's power. Got to be glued. <laughs> I use got. Yeah. It's it's a great. It's one of the best hair products. It it just it sticks. It stays. It works. And I use it on my mustache. What's the most difficult part of being you? The mustache. Oh, is the most difficult part of being you? The mustache is really easy to maintain. You would be surprised. It takes maybe a minute to style, and it just stays there all day. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. It's good stuff. It's actually really funny. Really funny. I was looking in the the hair product. I mean, I don't style my hair anymore. I used to have it in a bun. Is it? It's an easy hairstyle. I don't have to manage it. But I was looking in the uh, hair product section, um, and there's a like a Spanish brand called like Monkey Boogers. <laughs> I okay. And uh, Jim McDonald, thank you for that six month resub. It's like uh, something mocos mocos. Gorilla Mocos? Gorilla Boogers. <laughs> I, I should not be searching for this. Gorilla Boogers. Yeah, this is it. Moco de Gorilla. <laughs> um, I thought that was funny. Because my mom uh, speaks Spanish. And when I was a kid, if I would have like a runny nose or something like that, she'd call me Mocoso, which is like, I guess, Booger Monster. I don't know. I don't speak that much Spanish. But I saw this and it's uh, booger, Boogers of the Gorilla. Gorilla Boogers. Cool. All right. <laughs> Let's keep going. Oh, welcome, Luffy. Thank you for being here on Twitch. Moco de Gorilla. Yeah. Booger Monster. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to try to keep catching. I, I gotta, I'm going to have to miss some chats because we got to say hello to everybody and, and keep it moving. Uh, this is my first time watching a coding stream. Oh, cool. Just learned about JavaScript. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for being here. Uh, typically, people just hang out. You might learn in passing. Sometimes we do complex stuff that's harder for beginners to grasp. But I'm always open to answering questions and explaining things. Sometimes we do pretty basic stuff and just like we ex we explain it to heck. Like we explain it till we can't explain it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Favorite punk rock band? Uh, it varies. Uh, in the '90s punk genre, I like Green Day. Um, if you're looking at older punk bands, um, I mean, not really even older, like earlier. I, I, I like a lot of 90, 90s punk. So like Green Day, Rancid, and then some of the predecessors to those bands like Operation Ivy. Um, I listen to a lot of like ska punk too. I don't know. I don't really listen to that music anymore. So I, it, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Burn it to the ground. Wait, what? <laughs> All right, we're going to skip the skip those chats. If you said something, um, feel free to say it again. Oh, you have a Rancid tattoo. That's great. I have a Rancid t-shirt. It's not as, I'm not as committed as you. <laughs> Uh, um, I'm not familiar with the terminology. Um, I wouldn't say it's severe. Like they've they've had speech therapy, so we're talking about my friend that stutters. They've had they've had speech therapy since they were a kid. Um, it's definitely uh, repetition. Like they they get caught up on certain words. Um, 
I'm not sure what block means. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you, iRandom. Thanks for dropping by. One year ex uh, experience working as a student. Still learned a lot. Nice. Nice. Yes, this is just a black band t-shirt, which actually I, I'm realizing now it, it's it's punk rock. So this is a, a commentary on the fact that people wear black band t-shirts, but it's also from uh, inspired by Nothing Nice to Say, um, which is a webcomic about punk rock. And there's one of the main characters in it, this guy, and he wears a t-shirt that just says band on it. So that's what that's from. Okay, uh, let's say hi to everybody. Actually, I've had I've had this idea. So here's here's my idea. Um, so first of all, the stream has been live for thirty minutes, and we still haven't started writing code yet. What I thought was, what if we do some coding thing? Hey, the hacker! Thank you very much for that sub. Uh, and Klein, no Klein, it's too much. <laughs> it's too much. Oh, Klein, thank you very much for the 10,000 bits. That's definitely the most bits that's ever, that have ever been thrown at me. And I appreciate you, Klein. <laughs> Hopefully you're doing well. Ugh, that's too much. Too much. Can we get some hearts in the chat? Uh, everyone just at Klein and let them know that you appreciate them. Yeah. A block is when you can't get out of word. Yeah, it, it's pretty. He pre, he has that. Um, like he can't get the word out, or he would repeat words. Um, yeah. But thank you, Klein. <laughs> okay. Well, oh yeah. What I was mentioning is. Um, so we've been live for thirty minutes. I haven't written any code yet. What I thought is I could potentially start streams with like a quick ten to fifteen minute coding thing before we actually get into saying hello to everyone. Um, what do you all think of that? Like, what if? I were to do like a algorithm of the day. What if I were to implement bubble sort or merge sort or something like that? And then we say hello to everybody. How do you all feel about that? Sounds like a good idea. Uh, let's vote on it actually. Um, not that. Should I use Linux as my daily driver? It's totally up to you. All right, we're gonna do algorithm of the day, but you all get to vote on which one. Algorithm. Of the day. Bubble sort. Merge sort. Merge sort. I'm not actually I'm not gonna say anything about it. <laughs> Bubble sort, merge merge sort. Uh what else could we do? Um I'll probably use JavaScript. I mainly use JavaScript here. Bogo sort. We'll pick a sorting algorithm. Um you do heap sort. Quick sort. Alright. You have one minute. Vote now, and we're gonna just we're gonna implement it straight up. Tree sort. <laughs> yeah, list stuff would be cool too. Okay, uh, let's make a directory and cd into it called algorithm of the day. A O T D. <laughs> oh, we're oh oh we already cd into it. that command threw me off. Um, awesome. I'm gonna open that up. And we'll get it. Yeah, it looks like merge sort is winning. I'll go ahead and tell you, merge sort is one of my favorite algorithms, simply because how simple it is. Um, but it has potentially better performance than bubble sort. And I believe merge sort was, let's look up merge sort. I believe it was invented by uh, John von Neumann, or was that quick sort? Oh yeah, that's him, look at me. I know things. <laughs> I could be a college professor. Um, but yeah, Merge Sort was invented by John von Neumann, who created the um, the Neumann architecture, which is what every single computer these days, that's basically the architecture that it uses. Um, so yeah, computer history for today. <laughs> merge Sort has one. Let's do it. All right, we're going to implement Merge Sort, uh, which is a sorting algorithm. Um we're simply going to implement it because it's fun. I'm not preparing for interviews uh, or anything like that. We're going to do it because I like it. Um, I'm going to show you, uh, I think it's the big O cheat sheet dot com or something like that. Yeah, this thing. Uh, this talks about like algorithmic algorithmic complexity. If you take a look at uh, merge sort, where is it here? Uh, in the best case, it's uh, big O or uh, best case is in login. It's not big O. It's uh, what's this? What's this symbol? 
Omega? Omega. <laughs> Where do I redeem my coding card and course credit? Yeah, it's Omega. <laughs> Um, you, you don't. This is you, you don't get a certificate. All you get to do is tell people that you were here, and they can choose whether or not they're going to believe you. Uh, okay, and average is in login. Worst case is in login. Or sorry, um, yeah, yeah, and worst case is in login. So in the worst case, it's in login. Whereas something with like bubble cert, worst case is in square. This is uh, what, quadratic. I don't know. I'm saying things that I'm, that are getting away from me that I potentially don't know a lot about. But we're going to implement merge sort. Um, there's also this really cool website called Visual Algo. Visual Algo, that's the one um, that lets you visualize algorithms. And I think we'll start here uh, because it actually gives you some pseudocode and we can implement that uh, pseudocode. I was told there would be no math. There is no math, there's no math. It's really just uh, merge sort is beautiful in how simple it is. I'll show you, I'll show you. Exponential, yeah, so it's not quadratic. Um, but this side is really cool because if you choose sorting, um, then you can choose a sorting algorithm. Like I'm going to choose uh, merge sort, and um, then you can step through the actual sorting algorithm. And you can see the pseudocode. Okay, so you start out with an array of unsorted things, um, then. Um, split each element into a partition of size one and then recursively merge adjacent partitions. So this is the beautiful part about it because the first, I believe it's the first pass, you literally just, um, and actually I think that's why it's showing these things as different colors, is you literally split the array into arrays of length one. And then you take all of those arrays that are just length one and you merge them together because um, to merge two items, into or to merge two sorted arrays together into a sorted array is actually very simple. Ivan, thank you for that sub. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, okay, so yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, how do I how do I draw this? I, or how do I talk about it? Let me like see if I can show an example just with some. Yeah, okay, l l l l like l like this. So let's say you have numbers. And that has the values five, two, seven, and one. All right, these are this is an array, and we want to sort it. The first thing we do is we partition it, we split it apart. So you end up with an array that has five in it. Um, then you end up with an array that has two in it, and you end up with an array that has seven in it, and you end up with an array that has one in it. Now, if I want to merge these two things into a sorted array, uh, it's very easy. I can look at this one, like I can. I have two pointers, I'm looking at both of them, and I say, is two less than five? It is, so that's gonna go there, and then now we have a sorted array with two and five. And then I do the same thing with seven and one, then, um, so one comes before it, so now I have a sorted array of one and seven. Now, I just need to merge these two sorted arrays, uh, and I just have a pointer looking at each, uh, looking at them. So I have a pointer looking at the first element of both. Uh, this one is less, so we put that into our new array, move the pointer along, and then we compare it here. That one's less, so that goes into our array. And um, then uh, we move that pointer along, we compare these two, five is less, that goes there, and then we're left over with seven, and now we have a sorted array. That's really all it is. You split it up and then you merge it. That's what's beautiful about it. Well, hello, Paranoid Android, <laughs> thanks for being here. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, we'll we'll implement it. Let's see if I can walk through like this this pseudocode. I'm kind of in the way. Um, so recursively merge adjacent partitions. So we've each of these different colors represents a separate array that's been split into, and now we're going to merge the ones that are next to each other. So each one each of them gets merged. So if you look at three and forty four, if that gets merged into a sorted array, it becomes three and forty four. Easy, right? Done. Now we merge thirty eight and five. And uh, that's the sorted one. Now we merge 47 and 15. Well, actually, um, in this case, it's going to merge the two, uh, two merged arrays that we already have. And then we're going to end up with a sorted array of length 4. So we're going to look at these two. And then we end up with this nice little sorted array. So already, this part is sorted, and we can work on the rest. You can see how it breaks down. It's a beautiful algorithm. Yeah, it's divide and conquer. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, where basically you split up a fairly complex problem into a lot of small problems, right? Uh, why is it necessary to put simple primitives into a single array and why not another collection? Uh, in, in this case, it's just the simple fact that it is very, very easy. It's uh, 
constant time to merge two arrays of length one. I think that's one way, one way to think about it. There's probably others. I already mentioned it. I'm not an expert. I'm just a guy. I'm just a guy that's excited about merge sort. So we merge those two. We're going to merge these two adjacent ones. Um, yeah, so those get merged. And then now I believe it's going to take uh, these, those two, merge them, and then merge them with the already sorted array on the on the left. So these get sorted. Now we have two sorted arrays. We're going to merge those together, right? So we merge them, boom, 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 boom. Now half of the array is sorted, and then we just repeat the process. So uh, we're going to do adjacent, so it's 2 and 27, and then it'll be 4 and 46, and then we merge those together to be 2, 4, 27, 46. Right, and then uh, we do that, and then an array of length one is already technically sorted and merged into itself, uh, and now uh, we merge the two, like that. And then the the left half gets merged, boom, 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 and now we're left with one last step, which is to just merge two sorted arrays, which is also very easy. So here we go, boom, 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 and we end up with a completely sorted array. Isn't that beautiful? It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> um, let's look at the, the, the there's usually pseudocode for it on Wikipedia. Um, oh, that's good. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know, uh, you boy. I'll have to update my like uh, YouTube uh, uh, descriptions. Um, isn't this like bubble sort? No, bubble sort is slightly different because um, the way I remember it is either large numbers bubble up to the top or small numbers bubble down to the bottom. Um, whereas in this scenario, we're, we're, it's, it's merge sort. We're just doing a bunch of merges to create a sorted array. Um, top down implementation using lists. Bottom up implementation using lists. I don't know, uh, based on this, I think I'm just gonna implement it, but thank you very much, Ivan, for that sub. Um, let's go. So the we basically we need a function called merge sort um, that takes in uh, an array, uh, merges it, and then returns a merged array. Um, if you remember, the first step is to uh, split it up into um, so take the inputted array and split it up into individual arrays. And actually, I, I think, I guess I'll do the recursive solution, right? Right? My teacher hated bubble sort and always said it's the worst. I mean, it, it's a it's a pretty simple algorithm, but the what the reason it's the worst is because if you don't optimize it, then you end up in the worst case of like a reversed array that you're attempting to sort. It ends up in squared. What about duplets? I don't know what you mean by that. Oh, thank you, Conrad. Thanks for being here. Insertion sort is way more intuitive. Is insertion sort the one where you choose a pivot? I don't know. <laughs> Teaching bubble sort is a really weird CS education dogma. It could be because it's like you can do it. It's a simple algorithm. I don't know. Honestly, I kind of want to take this. I want to take this pseudocode. Um, and implement it in JavaScript. So this is this is our pseudocode. Let's make it work. Split each element into partitions of size one. Recursively merge ad adjacent partitions. Um, and what's up, Anacodes? Thanks for being here. I'm trying to think. What do I do with the partitions? Do I just have an array of arrays? Array.sort. <laughs> um, I, I always I always forget. Just skip every in. Let me see if I can find another. Oh yeah, this is another cool way to to look at it is to see like the tree breakdown. Um, maybe this is the way that I'm used to it, where you break it down one half at a time until you end up with a bunch of arrays of length one, and then you you merge those. I think this is this is more of the algorithm that I'm used to. So um, you basically do you do a recursive call to merge sort of the uh, of the two arrays. So um, if something like array length is one, merge it, 
I don't know. I need better pseudocode. I'm, 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 uh, what's the word? Um, I'm flailing. I don't know what to do. Somebody direct me. What do I do? <laughs> if I, if I want to implement it this way, what do I, where do I start? These are the steps uh, a human would take to emulate a merge sort. So I think I just split it into two arrays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Find the middle of your array. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so let's find the middle. Uh, and that's going to be array.length divided by two. And we can just do like math.floor of that. Or in this case, they did. Uh, so th the length is seven. Seven divided by two is uh, three and a half. So they take the ceiling. You start by doing the thing. <laughs> Let's do math.ceiling of array length divided by two. Okay, so that gives us the middle. Um, now, we're going to say the left half is going to be... Um, and thank you, NovaScript, for that four-month resub. I have an interview on Monday, step four out of five. Wait, what? <laughs> Let me read it. Uh, step four out of five with a... Oh, you're on your way. Good luck. But if you've made it that far, you got this. You got this. It's in the bag. Okay. Um, the left... <laughs> Uh, side of the array is going to be a recursive call to merge sort with um, the left half of the array. So we're gonna so we're gonna find the middle. We're gonna sort the left half and we're gonna sort the right half. So uh, we're gonna do uh, array dot slice because that's gonna give us a copy of a section of the array. We want to go from zero up to the middle, and I believe this is non inclusive, so that will work. And then the right half is going to go from the middle. Uh, to the end. I think I can just do that. So this does a recursive call to sort the two left halves. Um, and then we just return the left concatenated with the right. Like that. Now, we need the base case. So we have a recursive algorithm, but we're not handling the base case. Um, oh, no, no, no. We don't, we don't just concat them. We merge them. We say merge uh, left and right. Not merge sort, but just merge... Uh, left and right. Like that. What if the array has one or zero elements? That's what we need to that's what we need to cover. Uh, and Limotes, thank you for that sub. Thank you very much. Hope you're doing well. Happy to see you live. Well thanks for being here. Yeah, we need a merge function. That's the one. <laughs> so uh, find the middle. Uh, we'll get the left half. We're gonna pass that through the sorting algorithm. Um, we'll get the um, Actually this this should work. Return the left half merge with the right half. We do need to handle the base case. Let's go ahead and just write this merge algorithm, or, um, which should be pretty simple. Um, yeah, so if the length of the array is less than two, then it's already sorted. That's basically our base case. So we'll go ahead and handle that. So if array.length um, is less than two, it's sorted. Sorted. We're done. Um, now we need this merge function, merge, uh, that takes in... Uh, the left and the right. Um, and then we need two pointers because we're going to be looking at each item inside of the array. So um, we'll call this the left pointer. That starts off at zero. Uh, this should be a modifiable variable. And then we have the right pointer. Backseat coding. <laughs> so basically, we're going to be looking at both arrays and they both start at index zero. Um, and then um, we're going to need like a result array. Let's call it merged. Starts off as the empty array. Um, and I guess we could do while the merged, the length of the merged array is less than the length of the two combined. We kind of just need to iterate. Um, up to the shorter one of the two arrays, right? Right? And yeah, I do customize my phone as much as my Mac. Uh, that's why I like Android. It's very customizable. If left is less than right, do that. Yeah, there's a lot of ways to handle it. Basically, we need a loop. And we're going to be moving these pointers along as we push into the merge array. Um, I, I mean, to, what comes to mind is while merge.length is less than left.length, well, yeah plus right dot length. We basically just keep on, keep on, keep on keeping on until we've looked at everything. 
Well, index is not undefined. I don't know. I, I'll have to fix this. There's probably a better way. There's probably a better way. A prime candidate for TDD? I don't know, though. We would have like a simple... We would unit test this. We'd still have to write the code. This is why we have array.cert. <laughs> um it's fine it's fine we'll, we'll figure it out so um i'll say if left at the left pointer um is a thing and uh well not no because it could be zero okay so if left at the left pointer is less than right at the right pointer so we have we're looking at two things right we're starting here at the beginning. If this one is less than this one, the less than one is going to get pushed into the merged array. So we'll say merge.push uh, here. For cheat seat, no, we're not, we're not going to cheat. No, no. <laughs> uh, we'll just do this. So push it in and then increase the left pointer because the left pointer now needs to look at the next thing. Um, well, we'll do this. My linter prefers that I do this. So uh, if the left was less than the right, push the left one in and increase the left pointer. Um, otherwise, we're going to push the right one in and increase the right pointer. Like that. Um, where this breaks is if these two don't have the same length. So how do we handle that? Um... I don't think I don't think plus equal uh, is faster. The there are some implications. So my my linter doesn't like doing this because it's potentially confusing um, because this is uh, increment and then access, which is different from like access and then increment. And the linter just prefers this because it's more explicit what you're doing there. My loop is always true. Um, I don't think so. Eventually, if left.length equals right.length, then this is going to work just fine. I mean, really, what we need to do is we need to find the minimum length. That's that's what I'm that's what I'm going to need. That's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to say uh, min length is equal to uh, math dot min of left dot length and right dot length. So we find the minimum length, iterate up to that, and then whatever is left over, we just left over, we just cat concatenate onto the end. Um, so we have like a for loop i equals zero. Well, i is less than the min length. Yep. i plus one. That's going to do the thing. And then um, afterwards, we need to, if, they're, if they weren't the same length, then we concatenate the longer one. Yeah. <laughs> I do have a YouTube channel. If you do exclamation mark uh, yt, I think that'll get you there, or exclamation mark YouTube. Um, assume that the left array will, will be larger and have a second while if anything is left. Okay, that's pre-increment, post-increment. Yeah, and so this is even more explicit. Basically, left pointer um, equals left pointer plus one. Extremely explicit. Um, and this is like a shorthand for that. Okay. I don't know why this is tripping me up so much. <laughs> um, but so it, it uh, we're going to iterate. Th here's the thing. So we iterate up to the min length, but then we need to know which one was longer and if it was. So we'll say um, if left dot length uh, does not equal right dot length. So if they were of different lengths, then we need to concatenate one of them onto the end of the merge array. And we'll say if left dot length is greater than right dot length. This is why we practice. <laughs> if it's greater, then we'll do uh, merged. We'll actually return merge dot concat um, left dot. This is horrible. <laughs> this is. <laughs> I said at the minute. 
<laughs> the rest of the left array. Um, otherwise, um, we'll, we'll figure out a better way. Otherwise, we uh, do the rest of the right or right array, right? Something like that. Um, otherwise, it's already done. Is this the code required to do it? I feel like this. I'm overcomplicating things. <laughs> Refactor. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we have our merged array. We're looking at the left and the right. Um, that's how I'd do it. Okay. Uh, the length does not matter, does it? Even if the size is the same, the code may fail. Um, well, here's the thing. If the size is the same, then men length um, is the end of the array, and that's perfectly fine, because we're going to look at each value in, in both arrays. Um, and I guess the other thing is, um, you know, no, you know, you know. Actually, I prefer, I think I prefer my while loop. Let me, let me tell you why. And we'll, I'll have, I'll have to update the code inside of it. I prefer the while loop. So while merge.length um, is less than left.length Uh, plus right dot length. So while it's that, but we can check. We can say if uh, there is no value at the left pointer, so if it's equal to undefined, um, then we just do the the right thing. So if there is no value in the left array, and the length of the array hasn't been met yet, then that means there has to be something in the right array. So we just push the right in. Um, and then we can have similar logic for um, if there's nothing in the right array, do it with the left. Otherwise, if it's less, it goes there. And uh, is this better? <laughs> Um, is this better? <laughs> that won't work. This merge, it should have been easy. I couldn't, I, it is a lot of ifs. Um, do an array shift instead of accessing an index. Yeah, I guess so, because these left and right are actually copies of the array, aren't they? Or they're a copy, they're not the original array. So if we just shifted, we could do this while one of them has a length. <laughs> USB device descriptor. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess that could work. We could shift it. I don't know. I kind of want to test it. Will this work? I challenge you to a code pumpkin? What's that? <laughs> Are we gonna get an infinite loop somewhere? It it worked for that array. Can someone throw an array at me that won't that it that uh, might break it? What if we put 99 there? That works. What if we put 99 at the beginning? That works. What if it's an array of length five? That works. Looks like it works to me. <laughs> these are these are my unit tests. Um what if we put like a negative 100 in there? That works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. look at me. Oh, what did I just do? <laughs> All right, let's use this array. Let's see if it works. Ship it. Uh, yeah, it should work with array length one. Watch. So if we do just the value uh, 42 in there, should work. Yep, beautiful. Um, does it preserve the order of equal elements? It's a good call. Um, but let's grab this array. And we get uh, 2, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 23, 34, 65. That looks sorted to me. <laughs> but, it, what you're, but what you're asking, Doc, is um, is this 76 the same 76 as this 76 or is it this 76 and in this case it doesn't matter because they're in sorted order um hired oh thank you um, <laughs> there's another one to try oh uh, yeah I, I i um i think i answered this earlier but i, I do i have um well actually i used to 
Right now I'm running stock Google Andro uh, Google Android, but usually I have Lineage OS or something like that. Okay, we have one more to test with. And then we'll refactor. We'll make that ugly function up there a little bit better. Uh, one, four, five, thirteen, fifty-five. Great, <laughs> great. <laughs> a sort an array of nans. That's a good call. Uh, let's try it. Hey, that's a passing test in my book. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, let's try this. Yeah, infinity nan and negative zero. Great, Mr. Darkside. Great, 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 great. Let's log it. Uh, is that right? <laughs> what if we put negative zero at the beginning? Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what we were expecting with that. Uh, Lineage OS is just cool. Um, you can potentially use it without all the Google services if you really want to. Uh, and Lineage OS is the uh, uh, it's what was born out of Cyanogen Mod, if you remember the days of Cyanogen Mod and, and Android ROMs. <laughs> we're, we're sorting letters now. Test an empty array. It should work, because the length... Uh, we have that uh, that test that tests the length, and just... Oh, no, that. <laughs> like that. An array of arrays. Well, that's not what this algorithm is for. Uh, you haven't min missed much. We actually even haven't said... We haven't said hello to everyone yet. We wanted to do a sort. I'm not sorting. I am sorting. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, I'm I'm calling merge sort. I don't know what you're. Oh 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 oh. Are you talking about this this array, the infin the one with infinity inside of it? Okay, I'll try that one. Batman merge. <laughs> yeah, so this extension is called uh, Quaka. Uh, if somebody that knows it, I think you can, it knows how to spell it. You can do exclamation mark Quaka. You'll get a link to it. It's pretty sweet. It runs your code in the editor. That The green dots just mean that that line of code has run. Throw a string inside. This is an algorithm for sorting numbers. It technically should work because in JavaScript, you actually can compare uh two strings it compares their unicode values so that's a thing <laughs> all right i'm gonna i'm gonna sort that one next quaka yeah, yeah, yeah what's up electrothermal happy friday yeah that's the one it's pretty cool um all right actually i don't think i'm even going to uh i'm gonna re i don't think i'm gonna refactor it Zero nan infinity. Is that right? <laughs> like, is nan greater than zero? Um, what if we put negative zero here? No, it 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 completely messes up. I don't. It, it doesn't matter. Um, this should have expected behavior, which is the. Uh, the fact that we're going to run into some weird floating point stuff like that. But technically, 0 0.3004 is greater than 0 0.3. <laughs> it changed the negative 1 to a 0. I guess that's true. You can't really have a negative or the negative 0 to a 0. <laughs> How fast is it? Well, I mean, uh, technically, it is... Uh, in the worst case, in log in. Um, okay. Infinity, infinity plus one. I think I technically the infinities are the same. I don't know. I should stop talking. It's actually working. So I should, I should stop here. <laughs> uh, but also how, how can we, how can we clean this up? Is it stable? I have no idea. How can we clean this up? Here, here's here's the challenge. Here's my challenge for you. I'm going to post this code, and whoever uh, can provide the cleanest version of this gets a gold star. 
So I'm going to share this code. I want you to refactor it. This is up to you, person watching. Refactor this, refactor this to the best of your ability. Drop a link in the chat, and uh, we'll take a look at it. But I think that's it for Merge Sort. That was fun. Let me throw all these links in the chat. Merge Sort. It's fun. You split it up. You merge it back together. Uh, invented by John von Neumann, the creator of the von Neumann architecture. I think um, we could probably find a little image of the uh, architect von Neumann architecture which is where you have a central processing unit, which includes includes a control unit and an arithmetic logic unit uh, that talks to memory and it has input and output. All, all computers these days are based off of that, uh, created by John von Neumann. Von, John von... <laughs> um, can someone tell me what is... what What is... Um, it's a 0 0.3, um, but yeah, it's the, the IEEE 754 floating point uh, specification. You'll find it here. Uh, standard for floating point arith arithmetic. Uh, and it basically describes that that's what happens when you add point 0.1 and point 0.2. And there are other calculations that will result in similar, uh, like, rounding errors, uh, errors. John Von Jovi. <laughs> uh, also, check out the big O cheat sheet. It's really cool for, like, if you're studying for computer science interviews and stuff like that, um, this has a breakdown of the complexity of certain algorithms and data structures. Um, this site is really cool um, for, for visualizing uh, the sorting as it's happening. And it also has um, pseudocode for every sorting algorithm that you can that you can see. This is pretty sweet. Check that out. Oh, and of course, you should check out, um, what is it? Uh, sorting algorithm dance. This one. Uh, do they do merge sort? They do. Um, I need to. I need to mute this though. Um, Transylvanian Saxon folk dance. Uh, that is actually the merge sort. Um, I'll send this link so you can watch it. But they, everyone starts out with numbers, and then they do. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're we're doing the the partitioning right. <laughs> and then then merging the adjacent arrays. I don't know. This is, check this out. Um, and what's up, Murdoch? Yeah, thanks for dropping by. Okay, um, and now, and now it's time to say hi to everybody. Uh, so on YouTube, I'm using, uh, what is it called? Better YouTube? Enhancer for YouTube. <laughs> um, and it, it, it lets you set your theme. This is the one. Well, I have it in Firefox, but they, it supports both. All right. Now, we are an hour in, but it's now time to say hi to everybody. I can't believe it took us this long. I mean, it was fun. Who who, who learned something <laughs> in, in the past uh, 20 minutes of me struggling through merge sort? Smile in the chat if you if you learn something. One. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Cry in the chat. <laughs> um. Oh, well, thank you. It's Blaggy. Thanks for being here. Well, that's a cool smile, uh, big boy. Cool. Uh, thank you for that hydrate excavator an hour ago. Cheers. Oh, we got a focus mode from Danielle, which we didn't use. We probably should use that. Okay, <laughs> how about this? Cry in the chat if you're more confused now about Merge Sort than you were before I started talking about it. Uh, <laughs> and thanks for the stretch, P10 Designs. Let's everybody take a stretch. Am I going to do anything with my hair once it grows out? I'm probably going to keep growing it. Like, if you, um, if you go back to the, like very first original coding garden live streams um you can see my long hair like this wait i think this yeah look at me i got long hair i'll probably probably do this again and then i'll shave the sides and i'll have the top top knot thing again <laughs> um look at look at me yeah yeah <laughs> 
Uh, and thanks for the stretch koozie as well. <laughs> Keep the sides, shave the top. I could do the the old man. I called my haircut like the re the reverse bald guy because I had hair on top and no hair on the sides, right? Right. <sighs> okay. Um. Thanks for that stretch. We got two focus modes we need to do. Thanks, John, for the hydrate. Cheers. And Mr. Doom, cheers. Yeah, I want to play chess today for sure. I've been playing quite a bit. I think I've gotten better. It would be, I think it'll be fun for you all to see if I can beat someone. I remind you of Count Chocula. I could see it. I have a Widow's Peak. Um, so that could be why. <laughs> Three focus modes. Thank you, Drunk Time Lord, for that hydrate as well. And ACs with the hydrate. And Harry with that Twitch Prime sub. Thank you very much, Harry. Foster check. Quick stretch. I still have to say hi to everybody. <laughs> um. Stretch. Stretch. Happy <laughs> with the stretch. Um. No, we're almost done. And thank you, Erhan, for that hydrate. I looked like the guy from Narcos, Mexico. I haven't seen that. Yeah. No, that's why I got into chess, is because I watched The Queen's Gambit. And um, it was extremely extremely chess accurate. Even from, like, I'm a, I'm a novice. But I could tell that the moves they were showing were legitimate. And then I watched some um, YouTube videos about it. And people were, like, breaking down the games and basically saying that they had... Um, like really good uh consultants on the show and so everything is like extremely accurate but yeah yes uh but yeah that's why i'm into chess because that show <laughs> but i mean I, I played chess when i was a kid and i was in the in the um in the chess club as a kid but i i never learned like the principles of chess i knew what the pieces did but i'm starting to learn principles of chess like opening principles and um like basically like calculating lines and calculating um like the number of attackers on a piece to determine if it's if it's worth it to start trading pieces um and then also like getting yourself into a position where you could potentially trade pieces to get into the end game which is when there are very few pieces left i don't know i'm getting better hola senor say hope that <laughs> thank you Ahmed. now <laughs> thank you for that resub um and actually i learned um I'm, actually, I'm not going to tell you. If I play somebody in chess, I'm going to attempt to do a gambit that I learned, which which is really cool. I won I won using that gambit this morning. Uh, and thank you, Oscar, for the hydrate. <clears throat> okay. Um. We'll, we'll see. We'll see if anybody else is is on. I I'll look at your rating. If you're really good, I don't know if I want to play you because I'll probably lose. <laughs> I should I should play somebody closer to my uh, my my rating. Finding an example of a design document. I don't really know where I would find an example online. Don't play anyone with chess in their name. I guess that's true. No, it, it would be fun. Uh, we could see how I hold up against somebody who's probably really good. Tim Owen wants to play too. All right. Show me the gambit. I don't want to reveal it on stream just yet. It's a, it's actually really popular. <laughs> My rating is four hundred. Put me. We need to say hi to everybody. Let's say hi, and then we'll we'll play a game of chess. Got to say hi. So, uh, if you're new here, or not if you're new here, if you just want to say hi, like Hot Gravy, welcome to the show, Hot Gravy, who's asking for resources for a beginner in Python. I mainly do JavaScript here on my show. Um, but. Uh, I, I can provide you resources for web dev and JavaScript. Um, I'll show you. And anybody else that's new to coding, uh, what are some good resources to learn to code? You can check check this out, and also link to a short short YouTube video that I did. Um, okay, but if you would like me to acknowledge you, you can say hi, hello, hey, morning, afternoon, howdy, good day, good day, coding, hiyo, vo hiyo, or boga, hey. 
say any of these things, my chat will filter and uh, we'll say hi. So an hour ago, Awaited was the first person to say hi. Welcome to the show. Uh, what's up, Doc? And um, Igor, hello, hello. Can't be here, wanted to drop by. No worries, thanks for dropping in. What's up, Dot Slash? Dot Slash? And Feistrand, Boga, hey, what's up, Dubby? And Programmer, and Logic Husky, and The Hacker, and Dario, and Frytaz, and Shane Monk, and Mr. Mondadula. Hello, hello. And hello, uh, Faudelia, and Drunk Time Lord. Got my own emotes. Oh, <laughs> nice, that's great. Um, I wanna see, let me, uh, how do I do this? Uh, user, Drunk Time Lord. Messages. Wow, very cool. Drunk Time Lord Python. <laughs> That's great. Um, Erhan, how's it going? What's up, who are? And Danielle, and I'm Linguin. And Avi, hello, hello. And hello to Fox, and LTF, and DevM, and uh, The Ox, and Colloquial Owl, hello, hello. And hello, M. Bosman, and Curtain Call, and Hav, and Coding Canuck, and Shine Love, and Kabanks, and D. Hugh, who is uh, one semester away from graduating. Uh, with an A in computer science. Congrats, that's awesome. <laughs> and what's up, Christopher and Don, uh, and Excavator and Amazon, and Ims and Quran and Amr and Ayana Dex and Lou and Folky Bits. And what's up, Mr. Darkside and MMGO Marco and Kichu Cool. First time live. Thanks for being here. What's up, Designer and Geek and Cyan and uh, Mutayad and Yabo. Just changed my username. Used to be MMG Marco. Would you look at that? <laughs> my, my chat overlay shows both. Shows your old one and your new one. Welcome to the show. Uh, what's up, Tuzo and Cordy and Andrev Chev and Kokai and Stormborg? Had to pause CJ on YouTube so I can watch on Twitch. And what's up, Cranky Carrot? Hello, hello, and hello, Kuzi and Maza Med. Uh, the plan is we're going to write, I mean, we, we actually wrote some code, <laughs> surprisingly. <laughs> We wrote a, a jank merge sort algorithm. Uh, and actually, somebody linked in the chat uh, to their refactoring. It's pretty good. It's a little less verbose. There's less if statements here. Um, and then we have a little ternary. Good job, uh, Tifo. And if anybody else wants to uh, refactor that, feel free to drop the link. What's up, Marlon? And uh, Drustan and uh, Porsman and Mika and Pete Pal and Shepsa. Oh, and Mark. Yeah, sorry, sorry to hear that, Mark, but uh, hopefully um, you get through it. And what's up, uh, Lodi King and Unlove Slug? Hope you had a good week. It was pretty good. <laughs> it was pretty good. And thanks for being here, Costas. First time. Very cool. Hello, Zermax and Yufu and Natural Conspiracy and P10 Designs and Nero and Min Jim and Razor Sun and Ozma and Martin and Mark and Nerdophile and William Cameron and Breen and Vicious and Nativity and Achira and John and Bridge and Depo Pam and Timmy Connect and Timon Dev or Time, time and Dev. <laughs> hey, no worries. <laughs> There is no being late to the stream. You can show up anytime you want. You can also leave anytime you want. Um, and thank you for being here. Uh, what's up, The Jive and Greenplay? Recently discovered my YouTube. Oh, nice. Thanks for being here. What's up, Muli? I'm working through my auth series. Um, it's been interesting to find out what has changed with various packages. Yeah, um, that's a. it's kind of a part of development. I probably could just post updated videos, but it also is part of being a developer is uh, upgrading things and reading the docs and figuring out what changed. I actually did a lot of that this week. And what's up, F. Demazy? Welcome, welcome. And hello, Rylex and Blackhawk and Random. Uh, just stopped by to say that I love your videos. Oh, yeah, I read that earlier. Thank you for being here. What's up, uh, TTV Cryptos? Started to watch my videos. Nice. What's up, Proxen and Howard Bogahay? I can't get over this hairstyle. It's simple. <laughs> it's, it's, it's simple hair. I don't know. And what's up, Vishal from India? Very cool. Hello, Dubai and X Fool and uh, Spineless Linus and Prasanth and Overdose of Sadness. Hello, hello. Uh, what's up, Yasir and Paranoid and Pole and Lucant and Conrad and NovaScript and Anacodes and Limotes and Randomness and Oscar and Tifo and uh, Amikba and Nafto and Electrothermal Boga. Hey, what's up, Tucson? Tucson54. What's up, Harry? Uh, planning to make a real time map and have two questions. What do you recommend for the client and what do you recommend for the server? Um. It all really depends. For me, I don't really use GraphQL that much, so I'd probably use something like Feathers.js and build like a REST API. And then for the front end, I'd probably use Vue. For you, if you know React, use React on the front end. And if you've built backend APIs with GraphQL, um, I believe like GraphQL Apollo uh, supports uh, subscriptions, which basically gives you real time with GraphQL. 
but it's a, it's a whole different beast to do it real time with GraphQL. It's just different than what I've I've ever done before. Um, yeah. So I recommend other things just because I'm used to other things. But you could very much do it with the stack that you've described. Uh, and what's up, Mohan Gabo? Can someone tell me what the heck is that? Uh, where did that point four come from? We can talk about this a little bit more, I think, afterwards. Way too long. <laughs> What's up, Murdoch? Thanks for dropping by. Hello, Pablo and Oscarellon and uh, Velvet, Velvet and uh, Kalir and Flag and Hot Gravy and uh, Themos Dot. I, I still can't get used to your new look. Um, you'll get used to it. <laughs> Eventually, it just won't matter. What's up, Danger Mouse and Aphidex and uh, Arlabetum and Undidi? Uh, what do I think about having .NET for the back end? I think that's totally fine. If you know C Sharp, build a back end with .NET. Um, I, I did C Sharp and .NET a long time ago. I haven't, I haven't done any recently. Um, what's up, uh, Kizum, Kizum, and Big Boy, and Frogstride, and Guga, and Wet Seal, and Crashing Beauty, and Joe Mama. How's it going? I feel like it's been a while, Joe Mama. Thanks for thanks for dropping by. What's up, Shorty, and Scan Me More, and Humble TV. I hate Selenium with all my soul. Uh, what's up, The Real Pygon, and, and Impcatcher, and Blaine, and Ionic, Kevin, uh, and Shrew says, case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night from the Truman Show, which also is basically the inspiration for what I say at the end of every stream. Yeah. Stormberg works in .NET Core all day, every day. That's cool. Hello, Kingston from the UK. What's up, Aknot now? What happened to my hair? Oh, I just cut it off. <laughs> I got tired of it. So when I, tie when I dyed it green, I had to bleach it beforehand because I have very dark hair. And when I bleached it, it basically just, it killed it. It was, my hair was very coarse and um, just not healthy. Um... So eventually I cut off a lot of it and then the side, my hair on the side got as long, well, got long enough to that I could shave the top off and it would look decent enough, I guess. I don't know. Um, what's up, Sequel Gordster? It's Friday. It is. What's up, Stratus First and Penguin Trash and Vicus? Uh, and hello, Splart and Alex uh, Alexandre. I'm doing pretty good. And hello, Alifrey. Welcome, everyone, to the show. I wasn't ready. It's Friday. I wasn't ready for, uh, is that a dumpster fire? <laughs> this dumpster fire work. <laughs> um, anybody else, if you haven't said hello, if you say hi in the chat now, I will acknowledge you. Just say hi. What kind of method would I recommend if I have to write an algorithm for returning the largest missing element from a sorted array if you cannot use any loops? If you can't use loops, then you would have to use something like recursion. Um, but what do you mean by can't use loops? Does that mean you can't use higher order methods like uh, for each or filter or, or map? But if you can't lose lo loops, you have to use recursion. Like those are the two ways to iterate over, over arrays. Um, yeah. And oh, I missed a bunch of highs. What's up, Fuzznob and uh, Maj Jaden, SF Familiar from Texas? Welcome, welcome. Hello, Dynamic Voyage and uh, Pedrito. Well, thank you very much. Hello, Sibo and ACs and I am Shets. Have I ever studied the clean architecture by Bob Martin? I've, I've, uh, I've, I haven't fully read Clean Code by by Uncle Bob, um, but I have seen bits and pieces of it. But I have not seen clean architecture. And hello, Forward. How's it going? What's up? I satisfied. Any information on changes in your stream schedule? I'm right now I'm planning to stream on Monday morning, which is a thing that I haven't done in months. So just keep an eye on uh, uh, twitch.tv slash coding garden slash schedule. Does this link still work? That's me. Oh yeah, it's here. <laughs> um, wait, is there nothing on my schedule right now? Huh. Or is it just because I'm... Oh, no, it's because I was so far zoomed in. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to add Monday stream on the schedule, so you can check that out. What's up, Ravage? Can I recommend a boilerplate for React Node Duo? I don't know if I have any. 
no, I can't. <laughs> There's, um, I for 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 a Node API, um, I have the uh, Node API or the uh, Express API starter. Uh, or I I did this. Yeah, well, check out. Uh, hold up. <laughs> if you look at Create Express API. That will link you to the Express API starter. If you're on Windows, people have had an issue running this NPX Create Express API. Uh, if you don't want to run it, you can just clone the repo because that's all that command does is it attempts to clone this repo. And this is just a, a my preferred setup for a, a Node Express app. Um, I typically, if I'm using uh, React and Node, they are two totally separate apps and two totally separate repos. I don't serve my React static files from a Node backend. I put those static files on like a CDN or something like that. Um, so yeah, I don't have a good answer for you. <laughs> is what I'm saying. <laughs> What's up, Mike Rudy? Knowing barely any JavaScript to teach you my group. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Okay. Thank you for saying hello to uh, everyone. Thank you for saying hello. Not not to everyone, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I recommend a good book for Node? I don't read books. Um, most documentation on the web is going to get you pretty far for node and any any book that's published is potentially out of date already like it just two seconds go by and it's out of date uh neil Peabot, thank you very much for that twitch prime sub yeah never done these things in a real project what should i do try to build a project uh and pick something that's interesting to you um like don't just do a to-do app or something like that you, you're, a, you're a human being. You probably have hobbies of some kind. Um, or if you're just teaching yourself code, then you probably do something else for a living. You could figure out some sort of app that is relevant to you and your experiences and your, your um, preferences that you'll be interested in. So that's what I suggest is pick a project that you're interested in. Yeah. Oh, cool. That's good to hear, David. I have a question. Uh, it's okay to ask questions about homework, but we have a policy in our Discord that we don't just do homework for people. We re will remove posts that are blatantly asking people to do their homework, but if you ask in the correct way and you, you lay out your problem and you, you basically ask for where you need direction, we'll, we'll help with that. We will. Play me in chess. <laughs> I think I'm going to play Nord Chess. Yeah. Oh, well, you missed the codes, Nate. Nate, check this out. We wrote this code at the beginning of the stream. We wrote merge sort, a recursive mer merge sort, and it works. You can even sort an array of NANs. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Can I show you something I made in uh, JS? Sure. Why not? Manning live book. Yeah, that's the, so if you can find a book that is that stays updated and it's like a digital version, that's a thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I am a Martian. Um, I don't want to make a chess game what i potentially want to do is create a twitch chat bot where twitch chat can play me in chess that might be what we do today i've got chess on the brain um and i i've seen some people have chess bots like that but like uh lee chess is pretty cool because they have uh an api um like a bot api where you can actually send moves um to the game so that would be fun. Yeah. And there are other bots out there. Uh, the one thing that I'm interested in is, that I haven't seen before. Um, so if you look at this, stream bot game state, it uses this thing called ndjson, which is new line delimited json. And basically what it is, is a git request that I guess never times out. It just stays open and streams new JSON data. So instead of using something like sockets, you can basically open an HTTP request to this endpoint and it will stream new events to you. Something like that. It would be really interesting just to explore this in general because I've never really used anything like it before. Um, but that's how you can stream the game state and the bot can know that it's its turn and stuff like that. But yeah. Um, but not, but not polling, I don't think. It's not polling because you basically open up a stream and it's like the server is responding, but it's never done responding. But each new response 
um, is a JSON thing on its own line. But yeah, my, my hair is gone. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think like after it times out, you reopen it. I'd have to look into it. I have to look into it. Kind of like reverse pulling. <laughs> I And that's, that's what it reminds me of is server sent events. And so server sent events work with, um, or are a thing that's now available in, in HTTP 2, uh, which is the latest version of HTTP, but it supports, uh, instead of, uh, having many requests to your server, you can open up a, a single uh, pipe to the server and the client can actually receive multiple things through that single pipe. And that's a way of getting things from the server. I don't know. Let's play a game with uh, Norchess. Uh, we're going to look at a few of these other um, merge refactors. And hey, uh, Aragorn, thank you for the two-month resub. Very much appreciated. Um, this is an interesting refactor. So Basically, they're refactoring this merge function, which has a lot of if statements. <laughs> and what they've done is they're they're shifting the array instead of using pointers. So I'm using a pointer that's pointing at the left and the right uh, indices in the array. And instead, they're just grabbing the first element um, in the array and removing it. So if you haven't heard of uh, array shift, this removes the first element from an array and returns it removes the first element from an array and returns it. So basically, uh, we're modifying the lengths of the array as we go. Um, if left is less than right, push left, otherwise push right. Um, and we do this while they both have length. And if left still has a length, we can cat it. Otherwise, we can cat right. And then we're done. I like this refactor. I do. I probably would still write this as an if statement instead of a ternary. Uh, just to be a little more verbose, but that's a good refactor. Yeah. Just send a chunked response and read it line by line. <laughs> I tried it once. It's really hacking. I don't like it. But what I think is, like, this is actually supported natively by uh, the Fetch API, like uh, Fetch and Node Fetch, because uh, it supports reading from a stream, and then you can get events when you get new data on that stream. But yeah. It's not pure. <laughs> it's true because it's modifying the arrays. Um, but here's the well. The, the other thing to think about. Not. I mean, it's not another thing to think about. But in our scenario, we're passing in copies of the array anyways, so it's not actually that big a deal that we're modifying the arrays. Um, but if these weren't copies, then yeah, shifting the array could be a bad thing. But in our case, there it's always a copy anyways, so shifting is fine. Yeah. Ever do anything with AWS? I have. I'm, I'm, uh, I, I dabble <laughs> uh, in, in DevOps and AWS related things, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's all streams until you do something like that. But if you just read the streams and then you parse each line of the stream yourself, then it could work. Uh, this is the thing you wanted me to look at. What's happening? <laughs> It's a, there's an embedded video. <laughs> Mods, can you take a look at that and let me know if it's okay to press play on? Yeah. What is a stream? A stream? What is a stream? It's a flow. I mean, think of it like a, like a, a river. A river is a stream. It's flowing, right? Um, and so a, a stream of data is um, potentially, like it's, I don't, I'm, I'm lost for words, but basically uh, you can receive data from that stream in this case. Um, wait, is there music coming through right now? Or shouldn't be? <laughs> but think of it like this. So um, let's say I have gigabytes of data that I need to send to a client. You can't really just send it all at once. You can stream it, let's say like one megabyte at a time and a client can listen for that data and it's gonna get it one megabyte at a time. So it can say like on data, do something with it. And then it ha might that stream might have another event like on end. Yeah. Oh, you can send a link in the Discord who are. That'd be fun to, to check out. Chunks of data that can be parsed individually. I like that, that's a stream. To get into things, should I concentrate more on data structures and algorithms or doing projects? Probably data structures and algorithms because that's a big part of the interviews there, but I have no idea. I don't work for Fang. 
When using auth providers, do you set your own JWT token or the access token you can get from the provider? Typically, I set my own because a lot of times the access token you get from some external auth provider actually has a lot of secret stuff in it and you potentially don't want to keep that um, in local storage or something like that. So I typically create my own token and then uh, store their access token or their refresh token on my backend. <laughs> I don't know if I can play it because it might might get DMCA'd. A stream is what I'm looking at now. Yeah, it's a different kind of stream. But technically, this is a stream of data to your web browser or wherever you're watching this. A river full of information that can get to a destination. Yeah. Yeah. Lightjust username is W3CJ. Here, I'll uh, I'll invite you to a game. Let's go. I need to play chess right now. <laughs> Um, and I'm going to play against Norchess because they're the first person that asked. And then maybe we'll create a um, a Twitch bot that plays chess on Light Chess. Would that be fun? I think that would be fun. It'd probably take me a long time to even figure out like that LD chess thing. Um, I always can't figure out how to just invite somebody to a game. The only way I figured out to invite somebody to a game, this is a scam. What are you talking about, Bobhead? <laughs> um, the only way I found out is if you search for something, you go to their profile and then you click this button. Does anybody know, is there an easier way to start a game with someone? But here, let's, um, five plus five. I'm down for that, let's go. All right. I didn't see, well, play with a friend I thought, like, um, creates, what do you call it? Um, um, uh, creates a, um, it creates a link that you share with someone, at least I thought. Cool, so this is the Stafford Gambit accepted. It worked. <laughs> um, and so I'll show you some pretty interesting things we can do from here. Unless Norchess is really good and they know they know the ways to stay out of the traps, but there are quite a few traps here. Uh, I prefer view. Um, I've done some videos on it before. If you check out the frequently asked questions, uh, there's a link to um, why I prefer view. I'll, I'll tell you the move in, uh, afterwards, because I feel like Norchess is going to like look it up. <laughs> uh, playing someone with chess in their username is like challenging the guy wearing the U.S. Grandmaster Chess Team t-shirt. <laughs> I guess that's true. Actually, does, does Norchess stream here? These horses look like the ones from Medieval Drawings. Okay, I actually don't know how to handle this. I think this is a good move. Yeah, so uh, that's another thing I learned on Light Chess recently is you can change the, the piece set. And um, this one, to me, um, uh, is the most distinct. So it's easier to tell apart like the bishops and the pawns. So that's why I picked this theme. Um, which is why, um, I have that, but you can, you can choose other ones too. They also have like 3d. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the, another one is you can literally just do this and it's the letters of the pieces or like that. Uh, I think this, yeah, that's the one that I like. Bishop to E4. What? Yeah, I think I want to do something like this. Actually, 
I'm gonna keep developing. This might be a mistake, but I'm gonna keep developing. <laughs> no! <laughs> That's another term I learned is develop. Like, you want to develop your pieces, right? You want to you get your pieces into a good position. You don't want to be too aggressive early on. You want to get good position um, so that um, um, you have a good launching point in the middle game. <laughs> I, I watched like three YouTube videos and uh, do I know what I'm talking about? Oh my goodness. This is a horrible move. That was like worst case scenario. You're done, dude. Um, I guess, I guess I should have, I should have, should have handled that. Yeah, this is fine. <sighs> should I, should I have castled when he castled? No! <laughs> what's the, what's, what's, what, what else am I risking right now? Move the king and then buckle down to weather the storm. <laughs> I should have castled when I went here. No, no. Um, also, my um, my timer is going way, way down. I think what I need to do There's so many suggestions in the chat. I can't look at it's cheating if I if I say what do what the chat is telling me to do, right? Um here Al cow, Alka, but a cow. Yes, sort of. So I'm in, I'm in a precarious position here because we're potentially going to trade, uh, trade queens, right? You hear the wind? <laughs> it's it's my air conditioner. <laughs> Oh, I'm running. I'm running. Um. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good move. Make a draw. <laughs> Position is lost. <laughs> Offer draw. <laughs> or do you <laughs> was it declined? I can't tell. Um No, I haven't played this enough to know my options. Um <laughs> uh, I didn't offer I thought I did. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. We'll figure this out. I've only got a minute and a half left anyways. All right. How do I get out of this? Um, yeah. I think something like this. Mate in two? <laughs> I should have changed my category to chess. I don't know why I didn't. Oh no! Uh, here. That was a bad move. That was a horrible move.
There you go. There. What's going on? Uh <laughs> I'm very, ba I very badly, I got, I got owned in the Stafford Gambit. I'll show you the, I'll send you, a, I'll, I'll show you what I was talking about in the, the move that I played. But, um, I think because, uh, Norchess didn't take the bait of my, um, my knight, um, he came out of it. <laughs> uh, right there. I lost. No, we're going into a stalemate here. <laughs> GG. Um, cool. Uh, the thing is the Stafford Gambit here. Um, it's the three potential queens for sure. Uh, there were, I think there was a there was a chess.com here it is. This the one? Yeah, let's analyze this game. So if, if we go back um, way way back <laughs> who needs a, I just lost I got checkmated. Um, if we go back, what was the defining move? It was this one right here. So I should have. If I would have castled, um, click on analysis board. Ah, look at that. Okay, request computer analysis. <laughs> um, So, okay, uh, this is where I didn't castle, but what you're saying is I should have castled. What would have happened if I would have castled? Uh, before that, set up the play uh, uh, bishop g4. This bishop? This bishop. Oh, thank you, Norchess. <laughs> I, I, um... I, wa I watched a video on all the different ways that this could go. But yeah. How do how do I um do a different move than that than actually happened in the game? Local evaluation. It'll show you the best move. This is amazing. <laughs> so I've been, I've been watching uh, Eric Rosen on YouTube and um He's, I guess he uses this tool. I had, I had no idea what it was, but this is fantastic. It also shows you like all the different games that, the, that this specific board position occurred in too. Um, cool. So technically the best move would have been for the queen to go here. Well, actually, no, what did I, what did I do? So I went here and then he... Then he took the pawn because what I was gonna do is uh, potentially get a checkmate with the queen taking uh, this piece here, right? Because if queen takes here, uh, or yeah, I don't know, I don't know. I did not do that move, or did I? No, I wanted to keep that position with the knight. Oh well, great game. I've been challenged to other games. I can't. I can't do unlimited games on stream. We got to do like a short game. Um, who sh who should I play? I want to play one more short game, and then we're gonna write a, a chess bot. Me. <laughs> there are quite a few people that asked. Um, Actually, the I, I'm I'm down to play the she boss. If you want to play the she boss, because the she boss is a long time friend and viewer of the channel, and they mentioned that they play, right? Right? It's all fun and games till the pawns get tired and sacrifice their king. <laughs> 
Uh, Karan sent me a blitz. Bobhead. I'm not used to playing these really, really short games. Yeah, well, this is this is what we're gonna build, Bob. <laughs> so we're gonna build. We're gonna make it so that the chat can vote on the move to make, and then after a certain amount of time, the bot will actually make that move. Um, against me. That's what we're gonna do because the the light chess has a um a bot API where you can actually uh make the bot move on the actual board. <laughs> a collective hive mind singularity. Yeah, I've looked into a few a few different bots. We're gonna do it with JavaScript. It's J Phils! Thank you for that resub. Alright, who do we who do we play? Do it now. <laughs> for for a split second, I'm gonna change my category to um uh to, to chess. I actually ha uh, had a draw. Are you saying in the game we played, I was really close to drawing? <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to play Karan, because Karan, I think, was the first one that sent me. And they're, they're rated lower, so this could be an interesting game, because I think my rating is like... Um, uh, how do I go to it? Let's go. We're going to play Karan. Um, and I'm going to open with, wait, you play the white pieces. It's your turn. Okay. There we go. <laughs> I clicked it and it didn't look like it worked. Um, let's go here. Oh, um, they, they have a very specific bot API and you can create a, a bot account. So it actually is allowed on Lychess. Um, they actually they they encourage it. They they also have an API for like physical chessboards that can move pieces. Um, okay, I'm gonna talk I'm gonna talk through my moves because this is what I've learned about chess so far. Uh, and Milky Dev, how's it going? So what I've learned is like right now um, this pawn is here in the center. Uh, one of the main opening principles is you want to attack the center and you want to develop your pieces. So what I've learned is that in this scenario, this is a good play for one. By moving the knight here, it's attacking the center. Also, this piece right now is unprotected. Now it's protected. So before that, it was unprotected, and I'm threatening it. And now uh, Karan is backing it up by um, moving that pawn there. So now if I were to attack this, I could lose my pawn. Um, but another common play is to move this knight out as well, because now you have two knights attacking the center. Um, I talk like I know what I'm talking about, but I actually have no idea what I'm doing. It's just basic opening principles. And the other thing is to castle early. Um, and so I've found so far that like a move that kind of like works for me is to bring the bishop out and then I can knight on the next turn. Um, and the other thing is, is if this file is open, I like to bring my bishop over here um, because then it's, it's attacking and then it just stays there the whole game. And then uh, a lot of beginner players will forget it's there and they'll like lose their queen or something like that. Um, but I don't know, for any chess aficionados that are watching right now, um, what's the what's the best move for this bishop? Like, is it here? Is it here? Um, and yeah, I, uh, it's sabotage is asking why castle early. Well, I've learned the reason you castle early is because you are protecting your king. So, um, some one of the open, opening principles is you want to get your king protected, and you want your pieces to be developed so your pieces can start attacking. Um, and by doing by knighting, uh, or is that what it's called? But, but no, castling. By castling, uh, now your your king is nice and protected in this little pocket over here, um, and your two rook, rooks are, will, are potentially free to move to like attack along uh, the ranks. Uh, C4 is fine, right? Yeah, this is fine for now, but then I just don't know what to do once he starts, uh, once they potentially start attacking with pawns. I guess in this scenario, he could attack with this pawn and then I'd have to retreat, but I think that's actually okay. Timer, oh, <laughs> I forgot about the timer. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, and so um, he's attacking here. Um, I'm going to back that up here. If he decides to take, I feel like that's an amateur move because he has a ton of undeveloped pieces, right? So he's attacking early, and I'm just going to just going to take it and keep on moving. Um, but like all of his, so when it, like I said, I have no idea what I'm talking about. I've only like watched videos and stuff like that. But right now, um, Karan has a ton of undeveloped pieces, right? Um, uh, all, all of these pieces back here have not been moved out yet. And I currently have like potentially three developed pieces though. I'm, I'm still going to move my, um, I think I'm going to move my queen. Um, back here i think this is a good move just just to like chill right here mate in one <laughs> was it really for me or for him this is not a checkmate <laughs> queen f7 um Oh, oh, I see. Wait, was I just right here? Oh, I was. <laughs> I, I did miss it. I did. I did. Um, that's fine. But so and so this is actually a decent move because now I can't castle because because I'm in check. Um, I once you've been checked. Well, no, once you've moved your king, you cannot castle. And I have no way to attack his his guy here. So I'm going to I'm going to lose this. Um. Uh, I'm gonna lose this. Uh, what do you call this? The rook. I'm, I'm gonna lose a rook. Um, and for now, I'm gonna move him there. Yeah, I was just thinking. Like, I wasn't thinking about a checkmate because I'm still trying to develop my pieces. <laughs> um, and I was thinking, if the queen's just laid back here, it's kind of like posing a threat. But also, I learned that you really shouldn't have. Um, bishops along a file facing a bunch of pawns because it like can't do anything um mating and winning is a winning principle <laughs> i i feel like um um not quite though right the live coders conference oh oh i see now it's protected i see Oh, I'm <laughs> I'm messing up here. I'm really messing up. Um, yeah, that's a that's a good move, I think. Right? Let me go here. Yeah, yeah, right, right. So, because uh, yeah, Karan is ranked eight fifty five. He's probably played played a lot more games than me because I only started playing, um, like a couple of weeks ago, and my rank is slowly going down because I'm not very good. <laughs> Um actually I like this is I think this is safe right now. It's not really being attacked. Um Yeah, and I think now it's now it's time to develop a plan and start attacking. Yeah, so he gets he gets dropped there. Um Take. Yeah, take. Traded a bishop for a knight. I think it was worth it. <laughs> um, actually, I'm going to go here. Take, take, take. <laughs> Can't believe I could have had a checkmate. I was too busy talking about things I have no idea about. Uh, check him. I, so right now I'm trying to I'm trying to develop this side over here. Basically, I want to 
I'll tell you my plan. And if Quran, you're watching, you get, you can hear my plan. <laughs> Quran says, even I don't know what I'm doing. But what? But the the move that I want to make is here because that threatens. He could potentially he could take out my bishop, but then I can still, um, I can remove that piece, and there's no threat to me removing that piece. Like, but I'm kind of playing it safe right now. Um, I also could, if I remove this piece, there are multiple attackers. I don't have multiple attackers on that piece. If I win, you will get five subs. Um, I think this is my plan. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this, attempt to take out that knight, and then, um, like, weaken this, this pawn structure here. Yeah, so, with that move, this little pawn is in trouble. But now, this pawn is just gonna, it's gonna do the business. He's gonna go up there, he's gonna, like, I guess he really only has one move here, because he, he can't, yeah, yeah, here we go. Um, I guess I, oh, I, I could have taken the knight, huh? I didn't even think about it. <laughs> I could have taken the knight. Oh, no, I can take the knight here. Um, but if I take it here, it's not protected from the queen. And then he's going to come down here and, like, do some business. I think what I'm going to do is this. <laughs> And then now we check here, get that out of harm's way from the rook. Um, well, I didn't plan on that happening. <laughs> um, and then queen, what can the queen do right now? Like I did want to move the queen here to check, but now it now it's in trouble. <laughs> Can I take the, his queen? Um, queen to h five. Oh, you're right. He can't take it. He can't take it because that would put his king in trouble. Good call. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, he, he can't take the queen here. Um, and then we're going to chase him around because if I go here, I'm backed up by the bishop. Um, what should I do? Should I reinforce with my rook? Trade queen next move. No way. <laughs> um, I guess I'll, I'm going to... Yeah, he want he wants to trade queens. I don't think I want to though. King's going for a walk. Yeah, we're gonna just check him. <laughs> we're gonna keep, we're gonna we're gonna make that king walk. And then oh, potentially it would it then would have been safe to, um, to take the the knight. Yeah, here we go. All right, how do I end this? <laughs> um, checkmate. I can take the pawn and that's check. Check? Oh, 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 I see. And then he's gonna have to move his queen into harm's way. Um, and then we check him. I gotta make a plan. Right now I'm just flailing. <laughs> I'm just taking pieces. Um... Actually, we're going to reinforce, I think. Too late. I only have a minute left. Um, rook, g4. Take. Mm, 
Yeah, I think that's a good safe play. Yeah, because he, he's backed up by the queen. Now I'm in check. Now I'm running. Um, I'm going to go here. What's my plan? I've only got 49 seconds. Like, that's what I'm... Like, me and Samra are on the same, the same wavelength. Um, G4 is super safe. Yeah, but then it, then it gets him over here. I don't like that. Wait, which one is G4? All right, I'm just going to make him... I have no plan. I'm just going to make him run. There we go. Right? Free real estate, <laughs> Rockstar. What's up? <laughs> Thank you for the raid. Um, you are here watching an amateur uh, play some chess. Free real estate. Well, welcome everyone. It is free real estate. All right, you're well, very, very welcome in our chat. Uh, <laughs> I only have thirty seconds left. What do I do? What do I do? Uh, yeah, we're gonna go down here for a check. We're just gonna make them run for the next minute. Check. No! <laughs> um, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I should probably make a plan of some kind. Um, take the queen. Oh. Yeah, that could have happened. Wait, do what? Take the king. That's the point of the game, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a good move. Um, Does Rockstar play chess? Who? Yeah, we should play. Absolutely. I mean, you're probably going to... Uh, murder me but um take the pawn which pawn <laughs> chess is totally part oh yeah well welcome 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 um i feel like we're, ju we're just running in circles at this point i only have 12 seconds left check <laughs> check Check. <sighs> Ooh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> I only have five seconds left. All right, let's trade queens. Um, not. <laughs> Uh, we're gonna go here. Bad trade. I mean, I feel pressured. I'm doing this live. There's a lot of people watching and, and commentating <laughs> what I'm doing. I'm also not good at really short games like this. I typically play um, 10 plus 5. <laughs> uh, this is just bad all around <laughs> uh, all right now the goal is to get stalemated you can be my chess mentor if you could recommend a good chess book that'd be great See, 
see you, Osborne. Thanks for dropping in, being part of the raid. <sighs> Books are boring. Just play more. <laughs> um. Oh no, that was a bad move. Like so, I've at least realized that. I shouldn't, as a king, get myself way down here. Yeah. I'm about to be mated. Um, Lychess is the winner of this game. <laughs> um, is it even possible to stalemate now? It's not. Yeah, it is. It, it totally is. Just resign. No, I, I'm going to stalemate this. Watch me. Watch me. We're going to stalemate. Fame juice. Thank you very much for that sub. Uh, good to see you as well. Um, yeah, I've been I've been down to streaming like one a week. It's done. Start a new one. No, here's the thing. Here's the thing about me and my, my chess playing. Um, uh, yeah, here's the thing. I uh, don't give up that easy. Like, I've stalemated several times. It's gotten down to like... Oh, well, thank you, Totally Sane. <laughs> oh, my my hair. But it's gotten down to, like, me, a like, I it's just me, a, like, a knight, or sorry, my king and a few pawns, and then the other player castles, and then I end up getting a stalemate. Yeah, they're, they're about... <laughs> they're about to, um... Uh, what do you call it? They're about to checkmate me by getting a queen. Yeah. Because a queen right there would be the end. Yes. Last move of the game. We're just going to be as far to the right as possible. <laughs> that was a great game. Good job, Karan. Uh, they could have checkmated me about five moves ago. I've found that with more like beginner uh, players or like lower ranked players, they have a really hard time finding a plan to checkmate. They'll just like, basically exactly what I was doing earlier when I was flailing and just like checking him a bunch. I didn't actually have a plan to checkmate them, but if I would have sat and thought about it, I could have come up with a better plan. I don't know. It's a lot more fun to win than a draw. I think it's really fun to draw, especially if they have like a, a like piece advantage, if they have a whole lot more pieces. Um, it's kind of like a slap in the face because like they couldn't figure out how to checkmate me with a single king. Yeah. En passant. Did I miss an en passant? I missed an en passant. <laughs> and if you're if you're unfamiliar with chess and en passant, let's learn something. Because um, I learned about this back when I was a kid in uh, in chess club. And um, yeah, I remember, I, f I don't remember the guy's name, but he, he, he did, um, he did this to me. And I was like, what are you doing? He was like, en passant. <laughs> So the and it's uh, French for in passing. So um, the idea is if you have a so like if you look at this setup right here, uh, uh, two black pawns. This pawn is going to move forward too because it's on the starting space. And if it does that, the black pawn is actually allowed to take it, um, even though it's two two squares ahead. And the main reason for that is to prevent uh, someone from just like barreling forward and, and missing the chance for their pawn to capture. Um, so if they move here, they can actually take by going behind it. Yeah, uh, tilting people that um, have a bunch of pieces and you don't and you're making them run, that's that always is fun too. Okay. Um, <laughs> at this point, we should build uh, uh, a way for Twitch chat to play me in chess. I think that's what we're going to do. Um, should I change... My category back to um, uh, science and technology, or does it does it make sense to stay in the chess category while I'm making a chess bot? All right, we'll do one more. Can I play you, uh, Y44? You seem to know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, do you have a Lee chess, uh, chess account? Let's do a, a five plus five. Um, I actually don't know if I'll be doing a, a, a New Year's stream. 
Node UCI and Stockfish 12. Well, no, uh, the, the bot would be the fact that Twitch chat can play against me. Um, instead of it, it's not going to be like an AI or anything like that. It's going to be the hive mind of everybody in the chat. It's code the bot. There going to be some queen sex. <laughs> well, I was I was watching. So I mean, uh, shout out to Eric Ros Rosen who probably doesn't need it, but he has a uh, he does a Twitch stream and then he also has a YouTube channel. I've been watching a ton of his uh, YouTube videos, but um, there's some bot out there that he uses to play his chat in chess, um, and they always do trolly things like bring the king out at the beginning and stuff like that. Um, but he's great. Well, we're basically going to build that bot from scratch. Here we go. We're gonna go against Y44, who ha who's probably a really, really good chess player, but this is an anonymous game. Um. Mm. Wait, why can't I move? Game aborted by server. What? Did I not get here in time? Oh, I think I think it is Doc because you probably have a, a couple of really good players in the chat, and then everyone else who has no idea how to play the game, and then they end up choosing really bad moves. Uh, it's gonna be very similar to how to the bot thingy I did for uh, Onitama, where people in the chat get to choose the choose the game. Oh no, Anori's uh, Y44. Yeah, and so. I believe every time I played the chat Noni Tama, I won. Because they always made bad moves. <laughs> uh, and if you're not familiar with Onitama, it's it's like a mini chess. Um, okay, here we go. Gotta be quick. Cool. All right, so we're playing against Y44 who had some really good suggestions in the chat and seemed to know what they were doing. So again, I'm going to play this piece, which is attacking the pawn. Um, at this point, this is reinforcing, so I can't... I mean, if I were to attack, I would... We could, we would he would potentially take my knight. I'm going to keep developing, attacking the center. Um, he played this move. He probably can expect what I'm going to do, <laughs> because... I'm going to play a very similar move so I can set up uh, a castle here. Um, here's the other thing. And in any uh, like chess watchers that are watching right now. So like when I castle here, I get very, very nervous about this pawn uh, who's being attacked by the bishop. And I've, I've been checkmated before by with like a bishop and a queen or a bishop and a knight uh, just attacking my little uh, 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 king sanctuary over here. But we'll see. I don't know. I'm going to do it anyways, because now my king, king is somewhat protected. Um, I'm going to keep developing. A poison pawn. I'm not familiar with that term. Um, I don't know. Voy. Hive mind game in that people answer different questions. Huh. Never heard of it. Oh. That's that's a, this is like version two, Doc. But I like that. We're like a, a chess. Uh, we're basically the um, people can vote on moves in the chat, um, but the algorithm will determine what is the best move of the chosen moves. Yeah, you can just take the rook if they go single. I, that's true, right? Because I do have this backing it up. Um, I guess what I also I didn't look into it too much, but there's like the, the Bobby Fisher way of doing it where you move your knight over and then this rook tries to make its way up. Um, okay, I'm gonna develop here. So attacking his bishop, he could trade. Uh, he decides to protect it, so he moves back. Um, and I think I'm gonna develop my queen to back up this bishop here. Yeah, I wasn't ready to bust out the queen. I was not. Um, and then I'm going to do a little bit of this. So now the rook is attacking along this file. Um, and and now, now it starts. <laughs> so I want to attack this bishop because the only attacker is this pawn. And then that 
weakens his pawn structure on his king. Like, that's at least that's what I'm thinking. And Aztec Consulting, thank you very much for that resub. Hello and yay for a subversary. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's what I'm thinking. Like, I'm willing to sacrifice this piece because it breaks down the pawn structure that's protecting his king. I don't know if it's, that's a good idea or not. Uh, but now he's got double pawns. I think that's bad. <laughs> um, and that's fine. Yeah. And I think I want to protect these pawns over here like this. Um, this is being attacked. If I attack here, um, he actually has... Uh, the the knight is backing that space up, so he could attack with his um, his pawn, but then he might lose it, and then he potentially would take my knight with his queen. Yeah, I don't think I'm ready to start capturing. Um, I want to develop a little bit more. Um, I don't know if it makes sense to do something like move the knight over to the edge. Like typically, at least what I've read in opening print principles you want your knights to be attacking the center but if i go over here then I, that gives me a few more options to like attack on the the king side i guess i think it's a decent move because his only retaliation would potentially be to move the pawn here and then i can get out of trouble here yeah he's threatening d4 Code add chess? <laughs> Code plus chess. Oh, let's fix that. <laughs> and Vicus, thank you for that host. Uh, space three is optimal for, vo for both knights. What do you mean space three? Wait, what is space three? I'm not familiar with that term. Um, honestly, don't know where to go from here. I think I'm going to... I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this. I see. I see. <laughs> so that absolutely attacks the bishop. Um and then he has multiple attackers. He has actually can I do yeah, yeah. I'm not yeah, so he can attack like that, he can attack like that. Uh he also can attack like that. Oh, I'm very low on time. I'm talking way too much. Um so he has three attackers. I only have one. So I'm going to lose... Oh, no, I have uh, two. Wait, why am I getting so much time? Why did that happen? Or is the other player allowed to do that? Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> uh, you can literally click this button and give them time. I had no idea that was a thing. Bishop F4. Wait, what? Sack the bishop on h6. Does sacking the bishop mean sacrifice? So, like, if I do that, he now kind of has no choice but to take. Though, now, now he, has a, he has a choice. Does he want to take the knight, or does he want to take the bishop, who will absolutely continue to break down this structure over here? <laughs> Good move. Cool. <laughs> it's so here's the thing. If this weren't like a, such a serious game, I or I, I probably would have done that anyways. I have a tendency to just like try and break this down. Like if, when somebody castles, I try to just like take take the pawns and such. I don't know if that's what I should be doing, but it's it's, it's what I uh it's what I do. And I think going to bring this knight back now they're kind of protecting my domain here yeah that would be a good move capture h6 that's what Quran is saying be patient the position needs to warrant an attack uh, did you mean about taking the pawn on uh, h6 earlier yeah. Um Yeah. 
Yes. But the right thing to do against a defensive black player. Yeah, would you say that uh, black is playing defensively? I guess they are because they've only tried to capture once. Okay. Um... I mean, I... Somebody said queen g5? That's not good. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll just be taken by the queen. Um, this knight is threatening things. Um, do I like your badge? Yeah, I like an uh, angular badge. Very nice. Yeah. Um, so I can... I guess I could threaten or, like, attack his... Um, his knight with my pawn, but which pawn? This pawn. Do I even need to? The thing is, if I don't, he's potentially going to take one. Um, I'm a I'm attacking. Oh, your glitch con. Yeah, I've seen people with the glitch con badge. I don't know how to get it though. Stock garden. <laughs> Oh, I didn't I didn't see that move. I didn't see that the knight was being attacked. All right, I'm about to be mated. Checkmated. <laughs> I'm about to be checkmated. <laughs> well, I I could if so if I move the queen here, it's being attacked by their queen. <laughs> we're we're about to we're about to do some coding. We're gonna make it so that Twitch chat can vote on the moves to make. Why not take the free knight? Oh, you're right. Well, okay. I guess I could have done that, but then that would have taken my pawn. I'm threatening his queen. His queen's got to get out of here, or do that. <laughs> that's that's a good move. Um, what can I do? I don't. I think I'm. There's not really much I can do. This is trouble. Yeah, yeah, this is bad. You know, I don't. I think I've won. <laughs> oh, check him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's give, let's give him a, let's give him a, give him a good old check. <laughs> um. Aside from that, I really don't know. Um. Now checkmate. So where does he have checkmate? Um. That's attacking there. Oh, he just moves right... He literally just moves right there. I have no way to block that. Unless... I do something like this. <laughs> um, uh, it's going to potentially... There we go. Well, yeah, yeah, it's protected. I feel like that was a good move. Anybody that knows chess? <laughs> um, that was a good move, right? To like sacrifice my queen so I didn't get checkmated. QH4 would have been better. Trade would have been a, a queen trade? Oh, oh, here. Yeah, put the put the queen there. I think it was a decent move. So this is attacking the pawn, but if the pawn takes, then I could take to check. I can't take this pawn because uh, that would put my king in check. I'm gonna make my king uh, have a make a run for it. He's. I think I'm gonna get my king out of trouble.
So bad. Hey. <laughs> hey, the real droid. <laughs> I'm trying my best. And X slug. Thank you for that sub. Um, the notification didn't pop up. But three month three sub. Very cool. Um, all right. Where do we go from here? We <sighs> Who's he attacking? He's attacking that one. We'll probably take here and check. <laughs> yeah, so the most of the games that I play have been 10 plus 5, and that seems to be a, a good amount of time to actually think through all of my moves. Um, right now, the clock is winding down. I'm streaming. I should be coding instead of playing chess. There's a lot... Um, uh, against me, I guess. <laughs> no, pe people always dog on me when I'm playing chess because I make I make bad decisions. I gotta I gotta think through it. But coding Brian, it's gonna be my my chess coach. Um, try playing some slow games so you can check for peace, safety, and get time to think and plan. Yeah. Um, okay. Now, I'm in a bad spot. I think I'm gonna do this because. That threatens the queen. He does that. Again, I threaten the queen, but if he takes, I'll take his queen. Or, or I guess not. I didn't think that through. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of that castle. I don't like it. Our opponent proposes a take back. Sure. Telling me not to do that, <laughs> or do, or do you want to do another take back? Oh, I I know. I'm just trying to make the game end sooner <laughs> because I need to start coding. Uh, I guess I I guess I could reinforce it like that. Um, so like he has to take, and then I could take that. That's that's a good move there. No, the bot's going to happen immediately after this. <laughs> yeah, so now I can safely take this piece. Actually, if I check... No, that could put it in danger. No, I can't safely take this piece because it's being re reinforced by the bishop. I'm going to check. A 3D chess bot? Amateur's mind? Cool. I'll check it out. Yeah, I've been I've been watching a lot of um, like YouTube videos on book suggestions and stuff. Um, I did, I just want to find one and sit down with it and learn things. Because I at this point I've I've learned basic opening principles, and I'll I'll recite them to you now. <laughs> Develop your pieces, attack the center, protect the king, connect the rooks. Those were the opening principles. Um, and don't bring your queen out too early. Don't start attacking until all of your pieces are developed. Uh, threaten the queen. It's a good plan. Check. <laughs> oh, okay. He's going easy on me. <laughs> or, or he's about to mate me. Um, yeah, so that's check. Is it possible to share hook state between components? Yeah, all you have to do is uh, move. Oh yeah, I should have taken the knight, huh? Um, all you have to do is move your reactive state outside of the function. So if, if, the, if the reactive state or the ref is created outside of the function, then it's actually reused in every instance of the, of the hook. Um. <laughs> Are we just going to go back and forth? <laughs> um, let's go here.
My opponent, yeah, they keep giving me time. <laughs> can I, can I, can I, uh, deny it? Um, is there anything else I can do here? Let's just do that. No, I I never resign. Always shoot for the always shoot for the stalemate. I somehow still have moves that I can make. <laughs> Thank you, Vicus. I appreciate you. Wow, is that mate? Oh no! Wait. No! What can I do? En passant. Oh, that's why it's lit. And that's literally my only legal move. Uh, right? Eat? What's happening? <laughs> I can't. It won't let me take the pawn. <laughs> oh, no, no. I can't take that pawn. I can't move there. Take C5. The other pawn. I'm trying. I literally have no moves. C5. Okay. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> um, is that checkmate? That's checkmate, right? Why doesn't it tell me... Why haven't I lost yet? The top pawn. <laughs> King to d4? Why am I so bad at this? Oh, okay. Does that, that works, right? I feel like they might be going easy on me. Let's go draw. We're going to shoot for a stalemate. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he wants me to start coding. Consume all bonds. <laughs> Stalemate. <laughs> so for, for those of you that uh, that are new to chess, a stalemate is basically, I'm not in check, but I have no legal moves. <laughs> Good job. Yes. Um, which I think, which I think, does that, is that worse or better for your rating if you get a stalemate? It's a draw. A stalemate is a draw, right? Uh, what about the opponent? Your opponent is... Yeah, they, they are taking their sweet time. But thank you, Y44. Thanks for that game. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like you went easy on me. Uh, it is a draw. Okay, so now let's write some code. So the, the plan is... The plan is we're going to use the Lychess API. They actually have a bot API um, where you can make moves as a bot player. Uh, so the thought is we create a bot. Uh that bot will listen for valid moves in Twitch chat. And then um, on any given term, 
it'll listen for moves and then whatever move has the most votes that bot will actually make the move in the game so it'll make it so that um um you, the people watching, can actually play against me in the Twitch chat. Um, now, there are some some bots out there that already do this. I just want to write my own because I think it would be fun. One of the things I'm interested in is Indie JSON, which is New Line Delimited JSON, which is essentially like JSON delivered in a stream. That'll be fun to figure out because this um, bot state comes in like that. Um, but if you look at uh, Lychess... Uh, they have, you, you can watch like bots, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, if you look at bots. Does anyone know how to see all of the bots? Actually, here's another fun thing. Um, indie JSON, no, in, <laughs> like independent JSON, no, uh, indie, new line delimited JSON. Um, but I'll tell you what actually is pretty fun, especially as like I'm, getting interested in chess and like watching chess games i've last night i watched just like five or six top rated chess games just to see what the players would do because you see you see the like the opening moves and they're like pretty standard but then once it gets into the end game it's really fun and like this the clock is so low that they're just like moving constantly <laughs> Yeah, so this is an international master uh, who just... Wait, who, did they lose or win? I didn't see. Um, they won. They lost? I don't know. What the heck? Yeah, so this is like, uh, what is it called? Is it bullet chess where it's only, you only have one minute? Speed chess? Yeah. <laughs> so I was watching longer games, not like these one minute games. Um, but I don't know. Too slow for my taste. Cool. Um, there's a place on the site where you can see all of the bots, all of the light chess bots. Yeah, here. So you can see there's a anti bot who plays anti chess, which basically this bot tries to lose against you. Um, and there's like a ton of other bots, but we're going to create our own bot. That's the plan. All right. Let's go back into science and tech and then start some start coding. Finally. <laughs> um hmm. Okay, wait, did I did that not work? What just happened? Oh, it worked. It just didn't update on my screen. Oh, um, I looked at a few of the merge sort refactorings. Like we looked at this one, um, which basically turns those last two if statements into a ternary, which is fine. And then um, this one, which does the method of shifting off of the array, which changes the length of the array. This is a pretty cool refactor if you don't mind modifying the arrays that are passed into the function. Yeah. I don't know if any if anybody else did a merge sort refactoring, feel free to drop the link in the chat. Um, okay. Let's read the docs. So let's make a bot. So, um, and actually, I'm not. I'm not going to use any any libraries. I want to code all of this by just reading their docs, and learning about indie JSON. Because if you if you search uh, npm for like Lychess, you'll find um, some libraries that people have written for like a, a client and all that. We're not going to use that. We're just going to write it. All right. Let's see what uh, Velvet Tech, uh, Velvet did. A very similar thing, um, which uh, <laughs> more terse. But basically, you're shifting from the array, which changes the length, which is very similar to this one, right? If left is less than right, push the left. Otherwise, push the right. Um, if left is less than right, yeah. So it's similar. It's just swapped around a little bit. Cool. Um, yeah. So I don't think I'm going to use a library. Um, I think the first thing is we need to figure out authentication because we need to create a bot and then get it authenticated uh, with their API. 
Um, okay. Uh, auth. Authorization code flow. I think we, we need to create a bot user. How do we do that? Bot account upgrade. Upgrade a light chest player to a bot account. Only bot accounts can use the bot API. The, canout, the account cannot have played any game before becoming a bot. The upgrade is irreversible. Um, cool, so I need to create a light chest account. Let's do it for my bot. And then we'll upgrade it. Um, let's register. Do we call it uh, Samwise? Wonder if Samwise is already a, a user. And hey, Shepsa, thank you for the gifts. <laughs> Technically, I didn't win though. It was it was a draw. There is a Samwise. Is there a Samwise Gardener? There's not. That's who we're going to be. Don't look. Don't listen. I realize you couldn't hear me, but th but thank you, Shevsa. I appreciate you. Who says I deserve those gifts, anyways? Trying to create a bot account on uh, Lee Chess. There it is. Cool. So, at this point, I have a bot account. His name is Samwise Gardner, um, and he will be a bot. So, what I need to do. Um, is create an API access token with the bot play bot moves permission. Um, cool. And I believe I can get my API token somewhere here. <laughs> Somebody just challenged it to a game. I can't play a game though. If I play a game, it can't become a bot. Um, all right, I'm gonna hide my screen and figure out where the API token is because I need to use that API token to convert it to a bot. Yeah, here it is. API access tokens. I'll show you this. So um, I'm in my LightChest dashboard. It says personal API access tokens. Um, I can uh, generate one, and then I'll use that token to convert it to a bot. So I'm going to generate a token. Um, I think. Right? Ah, I see. Um, I can actually literally just do it on the web page. So uh, uh, in the docs, they linked me here, and that actually loads this page. I can describe the token, but I'm just checking uh, play games with the bot API. So token description is uh, bot token, and then I'll create it. Success. Um, Oh, no, no, no. So that creates the token, and now I need to do this curl request. Um, which actually is just a post request? Yeah. We'll do it with uh, with Insomnia. <clears throat> so, uh, 
basically, if you're new to like reading API docs, this is what this means. So they're showing us a curl command, but curl is just a command that runs in the terminal that can make HTTP requests. Any valid HTTP client would work to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire up uh, Insomnia, and then um, that is very similar to Postman, and then we'll make the, the request in there so we can like see the response and everything. Um, and what's up, Drills? <laughs> Back for the best part. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Um, we're gonna create. I know you can't see my screen, but if you give me a second, we're gonna create a folder for all the uh, light chess uh, endpoints. Uh, so, uh, in the docs, we see curl dash D and then it's a URL. Uh, typically when you see dash D, well, not typically, when you see dash D, that means this is a post request against that URL. You can also see over on the right hand side, they're showing us, we need to make a post to this URL. Great. Um, and then we, it, we don't need any body. All we need to do is include the authorization her header. So what we do is in the headers, we say uh, authorization is bearer. <clears throat> and then we take the token from our dashboard and put it right there. And that will change this account into a bot. So I'm going to hide my screen again. I'm going to grab that token. I'm going to send this request. And it says 404 not found. Oh, because <laughs> it's still a git. I need to make sure that it's a post request. All right, post request. And it says, OK, true. Great. Um, I'll show you the response. So uh, on the header tab is my actual token. But I made this post request with my token in the header to a uh, bot account upgrade. So now my account should be a bot. Let's, let's see. Let's see if it worked. Cool. And um, what this is saying is, well, let me, I just don't want to reveal any tokens, but here we go. So um, to know if an account has already been upgraded, use the get my profile API and the title field should be set to bot. Let's just get my profile now and um, see if it says type is bot. So um, we're just going to do a get request with that same authorization header. And uh, title is bot. Nice, cool. So Samwise Gardner, Gardner is now a bot account. Great, great work, everyone. What next? Um, stream incoming events. What is it? Stream incoming events. Stream the events reaching a LightChess user in real time with ND JSON. And thank you, Norchess. I, I appreciate you saying that. Um, start of the game, finish of the game. Stream board game state. Stream the state of a game being played with the board API. This, we're we're going to need this eventually because this is going to tell us um, <laughs> with the with the ND JSON. Uh, it's going to tell us each move that happens. So we're going to want that. Um, create a public seat or start a game seek or start a game with a random player I, I guess the first thing we would want to do is uh, join a game right or create a game let's look at games um, stream current games No, not non-disclosure, but a uh, new line delimited JSON. <laughs> Do I have any tips for maintaining a big project? Not really. I mean, all, all the things you hear all the time, you want to have tests, you want to have decent documentation. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really have tips. Get ongoing games? Use version control? That's a good one. <laughs> um, yeah. 
Good variable names, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's the same as JSON. I haven't heard of JSON L either. I don't know if it's the same. Um, so for testing, are you going to have the bot play with itself? Uh, n no. <laughs> um, I just wanted. To, I think I want the bot to join a game. Maybe I'll just for, for testing. I'll start an unlimited game with the bot. Maybe that's what I need to do. Um, so like on light chess. Um, just to, just to see it working. Let's find this bot. Semwise uh, gardener. There he is. Look at that. Look at that bot thingy. Uh, and then we're going to uh, challenge to a game. And we're just going to do an unlimited game so it'll be there forever. Standard, unlimited, casual. Oh! The bot has to actually accept the challenge. I see. So we got to find the API endpoint to accept the challenge to a game. Oh, and thank you, Dot Slash. Thanks for hanging out with us today as well. I absolutely don't get unit testing. Like, I didn't understand it. Now I'm coding in Java and I don't understand it. Um, the thing is, tests can be very brittle. And to me, like, that's my um, my biggest pet peeve with, with testing is you can write very brittle tests that basically break every time you update your code. And then it becomes a... A real hassle to maintain those tests. I don't know. JSON L is used for logs. Each line is valid JSON, but not the whole file, right? Um, it sounds similar to Indeed JSON, which is new line delimited JSON. Maybe it's slightly different. Okay, so the bot's being challenged to a game. How do we accept that challenge? Um, challenges. Oh, here we go. Uh, create a challenge. Accept a challenge. Stream incoming events. This is what we want. So for challenges, as this bot, we basically want to listen for incoming challenges so that way we can join join games. And I think initially what I'll do is I'll only allow challenges from my user account in the code that we write. Um, but this is where we're going to get into IndieJSON because we want to stream incoming challenges. Um, so API stream event. Um, Let's see what happens. Uh, I'm actually going to rename this. OK. New request. Get challenges. That's what it's called, right? Um, stream challenges. Actually, I don't even think this is going to work with um, Insomnia because the request never completes. <laughs> it's I think I believe it's a request that just stays open. We'll have to see. Um, let me hide my screen for a second. I need to add the authorization header of the bot. Yes. So I've made the request here. And as you can see, it's I'm not getting back a response. And I think the reason is like the way that Insomnia has been written is to handle just standard HTTP requests. You make the request, you get back the response. But in this case, you make the request, and then that request just stays open, and then new events are streamed to you as they come in. So there might be a way to do this in Insomnia. I don't know how. <laughs> But what I think we're going to have to do is we're going to have to write code that listens to that stream instead of waits for the entire stream to be finished. Look at this. It hasn't even timed out yet. What I'm curious about is, like, what is the timeout for, a, for like, keeping open an HTTP request? It's, it's kind of like WebSockets, but it's not bidirectional. So WebSockets are bidirectional in that a client could send data to the server. In this scenario, we're just listening for new data from the server. We're just listening. We're not sending. Um, so this is crazy that it hasn't timed out yet. It actually gives me hope because what I'm what I'm curious about is if we open a sh open a stream like to this URL, and eventually it does time out, and then I need to reconnect. How do I know? Do I have to keep track of all the events that I've already seen? Maybe. <laughs> um, but this is crazy. It still hasn't timed out. Uh, let's write some code that's actually going to make this call here. So let's get all that set up. 
Um, let's call this uh, Light Chess Bot. Light Chess Twitch Bot. Did I spell Light Chess right? Lee Chess. It will never time out? That's just crazy. I <laughs> think it's just crazy to me, right? Like, uh, I feel like it... Because, like, with the, with something like long polling, eventually it does time out, and then you can make... Uh, you make the re you reopen a request after it times out. I would assume we would need to do something like that. Um, I don't know. It's crazy. I'm just gonna leave this open. We're gonna see how long this lasts, uh, and we'll get our um, get our codes ready to go. Oh no, it's it it is possible. So the the thing is, each new challenge shows up as a new line, and so uh, as a new. Uh, a new line of JSON that can be parsed. And so if we're waiting for challenges, then each new challenge is going to show up as a new line. So I, basically I need to write code that is going to uh, just stream the data in so I can see all of them. A bootleg one-way socket connection. That's what it seems like. <laughs> it's very new to me. Okay, we're going to init this uh, as a NPM project. And then I'm going to install uh, node fetch because I, I'm pretty sure... We can find the docs on it, but I'm pretty sure that fetch can actually stream the response and we can see it as it comes in. We don't have to wait for the whole thing to come in. Like if you were to use something like Axios, I'd be like by default, Axios would just time out after X number of, I think there's a default timeout in Axios. Um, is the mime type multi-part X mixed replace? Let's, let's see. We'll, we'll have to see. Stream is a good description for this. I think so. I think, yeah, it's a stream of data. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make a source directory, and then um, we're going to install ESLint. Yeah, streaming. Yeah, th this is exactly what I need. Streaming data, and David Walsh has a really great blog, so I'm sure this is going to be fine. Um, introducing can indie json stream a simple javascript module that does the heavy lifting of serializing your indie json stream into a readable stream of javascript objects i want to write my the thing is i want to write my own library that does it <laughs> um i'm pretty sure we can do it with fetch yeah so, so something like well no this is using still using that library pretty sure we can do it um uh we are creating a uh, a Lichess, uh, Lichess, a Lichess bot that will uh, listen, well that will play play games against me, but it's gonna listen for the Twitch chat, and the chat can vote on which moves the bot will make. Um, okay, we have ESLint. Let's in create a, a linter file. We're just gonna use common JS, li Lichess. Like Libre, Libre chess. <laughs> it's not front end. We're not using TypeScript. Uh, we're running in Node, and we're gonna use the Airbnb style guide. Here we go. Yeah. So I will say the it's not an original idea. There are bots out there that do this. It's just fun to do these things. Um, so we're gonna write one. Do I own an e-scooter? <laughs> no, no, I don't. Um, Cool. I think we're ready to go. Let's write some code. Uh, <laughs> ignore the context. Here's a really dodgy implementation I did for JSON streaming. Let's see. I like your picture. Um, so fetch. Oh, this is your own function called fetch, which dispatches board slash fetch. And I guess in your store... Make the request. Yeah, I think this is it. So you make you you fetch it and then you await a, a text line iterator with the result. And then what does text line iterator do? It's an async function that has a text decoder that gets the reader from the body. Yeah, we're gonna do something like this. I'm gonna attempt to write it myself, but this is basically what we're gonna do. Um, so we need a function that's like, uh, listen challenges. Um, I mean, we'll probably just have a function to init the bot <laughs> and then init listens for challenges. 
Um, and then when this file is run, it just just calls in it. Okay, great. Uh, not not int, in it, in it. Um, and trains. Thank you for that sub. I don't think I saw the notification, but thank you very much. Um, okay. Now we're gonna bring in fetch from node fetch, which we installed. Um, and then when we want to listen to the challenges, we need to make a fetch request against this, which has still not timed out after 430 seconds. Um, so I think that's a good sign. Um, and let's go ahead and create like a, a base URL variable, which is this, lychess.org. Um, and so this is going to fetch that base URL followed by API stream event. Is that right? Yeah, stream incoming events, and these are challenges. Um, cool. So, Now, with the response, I believe we're going to be able to do something that lets us basically listen when the response gets data. Um, I need I need to look it up. Um, and what's up, Trevor Blades? It's been it's been a while. Hope, hopefully, you're doing okay. Um, we're currently writing a, a Lee chess bot. Um, okay. Um. What was I gonna, oh yeah, I found I found an article the other day because I was looking into this uh, fetch stream response. Um, yeah, I, I work as a programmer. Yeah, and so this is this is from like some I believe this is Google document web dev is like Google documentation, but they show the fetch API support streaming. So if you do uh, response dot body dot get reader, um, it basically does this thing this here. Within, we also could pipe it into a text decoder stream. Can we use a text? Is, does text decoder stream exist in Node? Text decoder. Do you, is it just a global? Maybe it just works. Um, I am standing, yeah. <laughs> My camera's at an angle where you can't quite tell, but I am standing. Am I just randomly contributing to repos? No, I'm writing my own code. <laughs> this, is, this, is our, this is our own little repo. Um, nice, yeah, thanks for being here. Um, probably want to wrap fetch inside a try-catch loop considering the connection is long-running, but it will go down at some point. That's true. Okay. Here's a potential another blog post we could look at. But for, for those of you that are just joining us, basically, the Lee Chess API supports indeed JSON, which is new line delimited JSON. So instead of having something like WebSockets, which would enable a real-time connection, basically you open a connection to this endpoint and then it just stays open. I don't know. If, I mean, this this one has stayed open for 620 seconds, so it just stays open. And basically, because that connection is open, uh, it is able to send new data. And each piece of data that it sends is a valid JSON object that you can then parse. Um, so that's what we're gonna, about to attempt to work with. Um, I have honestly have no idea if this is gonna work. Um, yeah, this is this is using an. Um, this is using a library, though. I want to write it myself. Uh, at my job, I we I use mostly JavaScript. I do full stack JavaScript. Create read stream, pipe it. Oh, this is for creating the server. There's literally a package called ND JSON. <laughs> Honestly, I just want to I want to I want to do uh, something like this. Um. Is that not bad having a constant open socket? This is all new to me. Um, I had no idea that there are APIs that could work this way. 
It seems like this would be similar to long polling, but in long polling, you make the request. After it times out, you make the request again. I also don't know if this has anything to do with um, like HTTP2 and like server sent events. Maybe that's it. I don't really know, honestly. Um, yeah, and this is going to complain about awaiting in a loop, but we, we basically wait for new events to happen. Um... Server side events is HTTP one. Oh, I thought it. I thought it was HTTP two because that's what allows it to have a connection. Yeah. So we're getting a reader. It's long polling without closing the connection. Um, yeah. And so think of it as like, it opens the connection. It'll send you some data, which is new line delimited. And then anytime there is new data, it'll send a new JSON object, but the connection stays open. I don't know. Let's just see what this does. So we're going to, we're going to fire this up. It's going to call listen challenges. Um, actually we, we need to, we need to get some, some stuff going. So this needs uh, an authorization header. Um, bearer and then uh, bot token like this and then we can get the bot token from um, the environment variables so we'll have a little .env file um, We'll need to install this, but basically we, we load that. That's going to read from our environment variables. It's going to bring in the token, so that way when it makes the request, it has the authorized uh, token. So let's install uh, .env. Hey, what's up, Cryptic Dreams? <laughs> and Imcatcher says, I am intrigued. <laughs> intrigued by uh, LDJSON. Uh, cool. So now we need a .env file. That's going to have our, our bot token. Um, and I'll go ahead and create a sample file that has that in it. Uh, and also while I'm thinking about it, a git ignore file. Oh. Um, I recently upgraded to node 15. So all my globally installed packages are gone. But git, the global git ignore package is really cool. You can do git ignore node or git ignore Python and it creates a git ignore file uh, that ignores all the common things that you would want to ignore, like, I believe it includes .env, right? So it ignores that file so we don't commit it. Uh, cool. Now, I will hide my screen, put in the actual token, and we'll see if we can actually get some events. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> So I tabbed out of this, and it still hasn't timed out. I'm just going to cancel the request. It was up for 14 minutes? That's insane. I mean, that gives me hope. That, that basically says to me that this connection just stays open. It doesn't time out. Yeah. Okay, I like I like that. Thank you, my name is Rick Zero. Ignore the fact that it's using HTTP syntax. It's just a socket that you can't write to, so it's a read-only socket. Yeah. But look, that took, that was open for 15 minutes. Okay, let me hide my screen again. Um, okay, here we go. So uh, I've added my bot token to my environment variable. That's gonna read it all in. It's not gonna get committed to git, it's all secure. Uh, when this thing fires up, it's going to call this function, which attempts to make a fetch to that endpoint. And then we do this magic here. So we say uh, response.body to get reader. And then we just have an infinite loop that awaits each new thing coming in from the API. Uh, and whenever it's completed, we um, jump out. But it, sh it basically will never be completed. Um, and then... Um, whenever we receive something, we're going to log it out. I think right now we're going to get like a, a buffer instead of actual JSON text, but let's see what happens. I am curious. Here we go. 
Response.body.getReader is not a function. Um, <laughs> we need. I, I need to look at uh, node fetch because node fetch might not actually support this. Maybe there's another fetch package I can use. Features. Use node fetch with this. Let's look at it. Streaming data with fetch and ndjson. Yeah, I don't want to use a separate library. <laughs> uh, I think that's the main thing is I just want to see if I can get it going with, uh, with fetch. And if I can't get it going with fetch, then I potentially would just need to use... I mean, honestly? Honestly, I could just use... Um, the HTTPS module. Like this. Let's do that. We're going, we're going all like full core modules. Um, well, technically not because we're using .env and ESLint, but we're gonna get rid of node fetch. And we're gonna use the core HTTPS module to make this request, hardcore. <laughs> so, um, because that 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 is able to read like it has a, a callback that gets called anytime there's new data, and I think that's a whole lot easier for what we're trying to do. Um, is there a request? Yeah, so we want to make a request. We have options. Uh, does this? Yeah, this has headers. So basically, we can move this into there. Um, I believe this is has a URL method it probably defaults to get but there's no harm in specifying it and at this point i'm just gonna go look up the documentation for the https module um https dot request the options object includes a host name and a path but i think you can also do it um Oh, you had your interview. How'd it go, Klein? That's good to hear. Yeah, how, let me know how it went. Um, so specify a host name and then a path. But also it accepts URL as the first argument, I think. We'll do this. So, uh, options. The host name is lichess or leechess.org. Um, the port's 443. The path is this API stream event. Um, you can pass a URL class to it. So, do new URL. See an example. Oh, there's a dot get. Can I specify options with the dot get though? I don't know. Can I'm gonna keep going? Uh, Klein says they think it went well. Have another one with an IT analyst next Thursday. Well, that's great. Um, keep on keeping on. Okay. That path goes here. That's great. Um, we're going to need to specify the headers like that. So these are our options. This is the request. And then we do the business here. Cool. Thank you, Twarf. <laughs> Much appreciated. Cool. So this makes the request. Uh, we can look at the status code. And then th this is what I'm thinking. Because we do res on data, anytime there's new data in like it's basically just going to stay open forever and it's we're going to be able to log it out. Um, so let's just log. Let's call it data. We're going to log data. We'll look at the headers. We got the status code. If there's an error, it does that. Um, wait, why are we calling request.end? And also, let's actually call this request because that's what it is. Does request.end actually make the request? I have a feeling we don't need that. Let's see what happens. Hey, 
Hey, no, no worries, the usual me. Um, anybody is allowed to say anything they want. That's the beauty of um, living living in a world where people can voice opinions and such. It's it's, it's no problem. Um, you do it writes the new lines and flushes the buffer. Okay, um, we'll re-edit it now. Oh, okay. So um, I think it's working. So uh, we have our status code. Um, we have the headers and we can see like, what is the content type? Content type is application X in JSON. So new line delimited JSON. Um, so we can see that it's actually giving us empty buffers, right? And those empty buffers are just empty events. But if a buffer isn't empty, then it's actually a JSON object. Um, I believe this is a buffer, uh, no, uh, data, or it's an any. Can I do like a two string and then do a UTF-8 like that? Let's see. Oh, <laughs> we've got JSON. So um, yeah, so now now we can see that uh, it, it's 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 basically giving us black blank data, and then um, actually um, go go challenge the bot to a game, and then it it should pop up here. Um, let me give you the the bot game or the bot name. Um, so if you challenge Samwise Gardner uh, to, to a game, it should pop up in my console here or my my terminal here. Samwise Gardner. Uh, so it looks like we have a request from W3CJ. We have a request from dot slash. And like we were showing, this is just an open connection. It's an open socket. And now anytime a new request comes in, it should get logged there to the console. Uh, we're working on um, creating a bot. Hey, there we go. So we got a challenge from Limeotes. It's great. It's great. <laughs> um, And there's a challenge from Quran and a challenge from Ally Post. So this is awesome. So at this point, we kind of just need to parse the data. Like uh, right now, I, we actually don't care about the status code or the headers, really. Um, when we get data, we need to split it on new lines. That becomes all of the, the things that we have. And then anytime um, something else happens, we can do something with that. Um, I, I, we're getting zero bytes. That's why it's scrolling. So I guess it's, it's just a keeping that connection alive. Um, those data chunks could be right in the middle of a JSON document. Yeah. So each one of these is separated by a new line. So like really what we need to do is we need to parse it. So we'll say like the, um, JSON string equals that. And we'll say if JSON string dot trim is a thing, then then we actually have data, um, and then we can parse it. Um, so we'll say JSON string dot split on uh, new lines. Um, so it's gonna be like events. So uh, split it split it on new lines, and then um, for each one, parse it. So map it to json.parse. I think. Not quite. Because we could end up with uh, empty ones. We'll just for each it. Here we go. Here we go. So uh, let's say we have uh, events is an array. And then um, we split it. And then for each part, If part um, has a value inside of it, then we're going to parse it. So we'll say events.push uh, json.parse that part. That should give us all of them. Um, and then uh, at this point, we'll print out all of the events whenever a new one comes in. I think that'll do it. Unexpected token curly brace in JSON at position 526. Um, I can't do two string UTF-8 because the chunks might split across UTF-8 boundaries. So what do I do then? Shouldn't the slash be reversed? 
Yes. I <laughs> mean, that worked. <laughs> So uh, I'm curious what, what Doc is saying though. So at this point we can see uh, we can see all of the challenges. Um, challenge <laughs> oh challenge canceled. Challenge challenge created. Yeah, it seems to be working. Uh, what do you what do you suggest that I do instead, Doc? Do I need to use that like text decoder thing? Maintain a buffer. This seems to be working though. Text decoder. Um. <laughs> It's fine. It's probably fine. <laughs> so we create a text decoder, and then what do we do? Decoder dot decode, and then we can we pass in a buffer? Yeah, we can pass in uh, data like that. Um, technically, the the data itself is not a stream though. It's just a piece. It's just a piece of it. Um, where'd that come from? <laughs> just. I heard a chat notification. I don't know where that would even come from. Um, it's an HTTP chunk. Yeah, maybe... Um, that's why this is working, Doc? Oh, that's the light chest notification. That makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> um, okay, This if this works, we're going to stick with it. Um, but if it doesn't work, we're just going to go back to doing what we're doing right now. So decode, you pass in, uh, the buffer, which is data and you say that it's a stream, but it's, it's not though. This is, uh, this is each, this is not a stream. It's a complete buffer. It's only, it's chunk, it's chunk, um, each new line you can be sure that if there was something before it, it was a each JSON object is on its own line. I think that's that's one thing we know. Um, it's on its its own unique line. It's an incomplete buffer that happens to be fifteen hundred bytes. I don't know. <laughs> um, Actually, let's create the array of events every time because this is going to give us events that have uh, on every time we get data, we get the list of events. And so um, on the very first call, we should get all of the events. Oh, actually, no, it is called multiple times. So we get uh, this challenge, this challenge, and then this challenge. And then if another challenge comes in, um, we'll see that pop up as well. And like, I guess technically we could turn this into a little event emitter. That's probably what we need to do because right now it's just like listening to the stream, but we could wrap this in a challenge listener object that emits a new challenge event anytime one happens. Actually, I can't tell if this was a new challenge or not because I'm I'm missing a lot of the a lot of the info. Um, one, two, three. Yeah. So. This challenge came from limotes. This challenge came from dot slash. This challenge came from me. Uh, this kind of chunk boundary is an edge case that won't occur. And I, yeah, if so, but I guess what you're saying is if it's not UTF-8 things, it could mess it up. Yeah, that makes sense. The chunk boundary may be inside the JSON. Yeah, I was saying, if, if it breaks, we'll fix it. But right now, I think it's fine. <laughs> um, cool. That's great. At this point, I'm only going to accept um, the challenge from my user, W3CJ. Um, and the challenge ID is this.
Um, and actually, yeah, and then we're not using this anymore. I'm just trying to figure out, like, do I actually care about writing this in a good way? <laughs> like, do I care about refactoring it, potentially doing some OOP where this is like an object and it it's an event emitter itself, so it can emit events like new challenge? I don't know if I care that much. I think, I think what I want to do today is I just want to get a game going, and I want chat to be able to vote on moves. I think that's it. So if I just um, accept the challenge where the challenger name is CJ, call it a day. Yeah, I think we'll call it a day. So um, call event is going to be this. And I'll say if event.challenger. Uh, I just use iterm2. Um, it's a nice term. I'm on a Mac. Um, okay, so if event dot challenge, or event dot type equals challenge, and event dot challenge dot challenger dot id. Ew, Mac! <laughs> it works. It just works, and uh, you can't take that away from me. <laughs> My Mac works. How is your? Windows machine, or how is your Linux machine? Um, okay. It's a challenge. The challenger ID is CJ, and then we're just going to accept. We're going to accept the challenge straight up. Um, <laughs> blue screen save me. <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah. Okay, so if it was from CJ, we're going to log that event. Yeah, they are expensive. Uh, I have a, a, a used 2015 MacBook Pro, and it works just fine. Um, okay, so uh, we've got the challenge. The challenge ID is what we're going to need to actually accept the challenge. Um, but let's go from here. So now, uh, and hey, HVBO, thank you very much for that four month resub. Who says, sup? Sup? <laughs> um, and Aknot, thank you for that gift to Easy. Cool. So at this point, we should only see one event logged, and that is the event. That is the request from my user account to play the game. Great. Um, and um, we need that challenge ID. I think at this point, we'll, we'll create a function that's something like uh, accept challenge. And we'll pass in that event. Async function accept challenge. That takes in the challenge. Um, it's a lot of follows. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> um, yeah, the, yeah. So it's it's getting better. I have heard of people using uh, the Windows subsystem for Linux to get like a decent experience on Windows. But what you might not know is that this is it's when you enable this. I believe maybe maybe it was only WSL one. But when you enable this, your Windows when you're running Windows, you're actually running a virtual machine which is weird. <laughs> you, you'll probably um, uh, feel it if you play games on that same machine. And hello, everyone. Why do I prefer Firefox over Chrome? Eh, mainly because it's not a large corporation that's trying to steal all my data. I mean, they are a larger corporation, but they do good things. Mozilla is nice. I like Mozilla. Yeah. WSL1? Oh, okay. It's good to know. Okay. <laughs> We've got this. So now we need a function called accept challenge that is going to accept the challenge. If we look back at the API docs, um, where are we? Not there. Uh, here? Here. Uh, accept a challenge. So here we make a post request against this URL. And I think I think at this point, uh, I'm actually going to uh, reinstall node fetch. Well, actually, I might install Axios. I'm going to install Axios. So for basic post requests, it's nice to use something like an HTTP library versus having to use the core module. Because um, then you got to do things like listen on data. I'm actually just going to install Axios. Cool. So we'll bring it in. 
and then um, try got. I don't feel like changing. I feel like I looked at the docs for got once, and <laughs> it didn't seem as nice and simple and easy as Axios. So I'm going to stick with Axios. Uh, so at this point, we could do axios.get. Uh, we got to go against this URL uh, with the challenge ID. Um, and so the challenge ID is actually going to be uh, challenge. Actually, let's call this event, because then I think it's event.challenge.id. Look back in the terminal. Uh, event.challenge.id. That's the one. And then we make this a template literal. Um, yeah, so that should be it. Actually, and it's not a post request. It's going to be, it's not a get request. It's going to be a post request. So axios.post, uh, we need to specify the same headers. Um, I'm just going to put this in a variable because we keep using it. Like that. Um... And then we have some options with headers. And then we can't forget the base URL here. So um, somebody said, yes, I do. Yes, I do what? <laughs> but uh, we're, we're going to listen for new challenges. If that challenge uh, comes from me, W3CJ, then we're going to accept that challenge. To accept the challenge, we make a post request against this URL. Uh, and that should do it. I think that should do it. Let's see what happens. And then we'll just log the response. Um, <laughs> at this point, you should convert the whole project to an Axios instance. N no. Um, but here is the thing. Um, we actually can see. Well, actually, we'll leave it open. So uh, right now, um, this is just waiting for the bot to accept the, the game challenge, right? It's just waiting for the bot. And I'm hoping uh, when I run this, it's going to accept the challenge. And we should see that change over here. So let's go. Missing authorization header. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, actually, um, when you make a post request, yeah, we have a header. Uh, do we leave, we need to specify an empty body? Oh yeah yeah yeah. Um, like this. So post post nothing, I believe. If we if we look at their docs, um, it just wants an empty body. Right? Is that how we do an empty bo uh, empty body with Axios? Let's see. Should work. All right. Uh, wait. Okay. Here comes the magic. It's gonna accept the game. Didn't <laughs> didn't work. Uh, it is also missing the authorization header. Axios post empty body. Sending an empty object. I guess instead of undefined, do I pass in? Wait. A post request, Axios post request work. Is it typically body and then options or options then body? Options and then body, right? I think. 
Uh, can I suggest a CSS framework that works with Vue? Pretty much any CSS, like straight CSS framework will work, like Bootstrap or Beautif uh, 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 Bulma um, or Foundation. Um, pretty much anyone will work. It's just whenever you want to start using the JavaScript and interactivity, that's when you might run into issues. Um, and in terms of library, like component libraries that work with Vue 3, um, I don't know off the top of my head. I know that a lot of them are, are, are working on it right now. Body and then options. So post, that's kind of what I had, right? Let's go look up the docs for Axios post. This is exactly why I was using Axios, because I didn't want to look at the docs, because I know how to use it. But let's see. Um, this. See an example of a post request. So, um, oh, not that. Um, post request, and then, oh, let's just do it like this. Method, and then URL. Um, and then you can just invoke it, right? Yeah. I just copied that. <laughs> no worries, Razor. Um, okay, so here's um, our URL. We just invoke Axios like this. We'll say URL is that. The method is uh, post. And then we can specify the headers, probably, right there, like that. Oh, well, apparently you can use Axios to have a stream response type. Okay, this is the winner. See, <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't remember you telling me that, but it. Okay, um, cool. So let's see if it works. This is this is the the moment of truth. Um, it's waiting, waiting to accept. And then when I run the code over here, it's gonna accept the request. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, the bot accepted the game. Awesome. We've done it. Uh, and it just responds with, okay, true. Now, how do I get the game ID? Like, how do I know the, um, yeah, great job. Now we're factor. <laughs> how do I know, um, uh, what the game ID is? I guess I have to make another request to get the ID of the game. Um, let's see. Yeah, because this just responds with okay, true. So we don't really even need that. Accept the challenge. Yeah, actually, I guess we could do that. If so, if data dot okay um, is true, then um, we'll say uh, start game, and then pass in the event because maybe you can use the event or the challenge ID to to um, get info about the game. We'll see. We'll look at the docs. <laughs> maybe maybe Axios is the answer. I was going to point out more edge cases in the stream chunking code. Yeah. Um, yeah, data. Okay, that should be good. Start the game, I guess. Uh, let's go look back at their docs to see what we need to do. Honestly, um, Well, actually, what I'm also curious about, curious about now is um, now that I accepted the challenge, um, is it no longer listed in that response? Let's see. So we start it up. Yeah. I think now that I accepted it, it's no longer included in the response for uh, events. And that makes sense because the event was handled. Okay. Um, so we've accepted the game. Um, now we start it. I don't know. Let's look at the docs. It's that, don't need that, don't need that. Or that, or that, or that. Okay. Um, oh, okay, so accepting an incoming challenge, you should receive a game start event on the incoming event stream. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, we missed it. I should have planned for that. Um, um, so, wait. Challenges. Stream incoming events. So we just did that. I should have listened for game start. Um, actually, let's just log all the events again. Is it in there? So we just have, oh, here it is, game start. And then we have the game ID. Is the game ID the same as the request ID? R-S-H-Q-2-T-J-N. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 So the, the request ID is actually the ID of the game. It is. Cool. Um, though technically, I guess we should listen for game start. I don't think so. I think now we just listen for events on that game. So... Um, so we accept challenge. We'll call start game, which has access to the event and the event.challenge.id, which is the game ID. That. Um, and then we probably need to do like an event listener thing for game events. So uh, we accepted the challenge. Now if we look at games, um, Stream current games. Stream the games played between a list of users in real time. Um, just look at bot. Stream bot game state. Here we go. Stream the state of a game being played with the with the bot API. Um, yeah, so we do game stream and then the game ID. So it's going to be just like before. We set up a stream and then that's going to respond as the game happens. Full game data. Game state. Chat. Oh, you get chat messages. That's cool. <laughs> the first line is always of type game full. So the full game state. Uh, okay, so we need to call this. I think at this point, maybe we can attempt to use Axios to do a stream type thingy. Um, instead of using HTTP, let's let's try it. <laughs> um, so uh, here in Listen Challenges, we want to do something like this. Um, get Throw in that base URL, stream event. Response type is stream. So we should be able to await it. And then uh, response dot, we don't want to pipe it. We want to do something else with it. Response dot on. How's this going to work? So in this scenario, uh, we have the response, and we can listen for when it has data. Um, I'm curious if we can do the same thing here. Like that. What's up, Premix? Welcome to the show. All right, so we're going to comment out all that code that was doing it before. And now, um, would I await response.body? Is that what you're saying, Doc? I don't know. Let, let's see what this does. Uh, maybe there is no on event. No. Um, Axios error. 
Um, oh, we have multiple focus modes. We're gonna let's do those. <laughs> let's do those focus modes. Um, I don't know if my linter even knows about 408 loops. Let's see. Oh, okay. Let's see what happens. Um, this also errors out. Restricted syntax. Um, but if you give me a second, I'm gonna parse through this error because uh, I think there could be tokens in here. But I'm gonna parse through and see what's happening exactly. Oh, 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 oh! oh I know, I know exactly what. At least for right now, um, I'm not specifying the headers. <laughs> I need to, I need to specify the headers, which should have my token inside of it. Yeah, yeah. I forgot the headers. Thank you, SQL Gordster. Well, uh, response is not an async iterable, so that's fun. <laughs> Let's just try with uh, response on data, which is slightly easier than um, the way we had to do it with HTTPS, but honestly, it's not much different. We'll see what data is. It might be a buffer. Let's see. Response.on is not a function. Okay. <laughs> Response.data? There is no on. All right, uh, I'm gonna hide my screen because there could be tokens in here, but response.data is apparently, <laughs> response.off, no. Um, this is everything? Incoming message. I don't know. At this point, I should probably should just be using a library. Um, or we could, I mean, my method was working. Uh, well, let's see. Axios uh, LD JSON stream. Let's go to Google. Response.data.on. So here's the thing. I'm awaiting the initial request, but because this is a stream, it's going to stay open, and we need to know, and, and we're, we need to see all of that data. Um, actually, in their example, they did response.data.pipe. I think that's what we need to, maybe we need to do that, because each time we get new data, it's going to go into that pipe. Oh, you're right, it was in DJSON, but um, response.data.pipe. This accepts a readable stream. Can we create our own readable stream that just gets a callback with the data? Stream consumers. So we could I think create a stream? Uh, stream. Hmm. If it's got a pipe, then I should be able to for. Is this what you're saying, Doc? So if response.data.pipe is a thing, then I should be able to do 408 data of response.data. And I guess really we call this a chunk. Yes. <laughs> uh, monka, monka S. All right, let's see. Hey, 
But now we're running in, now we're now we run into the same scenario where uh, the buffer is, <laughs> we have to convert it. Uh, it's it's not necessarily a bad thing. I think we're going to do it in exactly the same way though. We have this uh, text I mean Wait. Does this actually give us multiple and then we can just parse that? Or is it getting it all at once? I don't think you can. Can you just two string it? Apparently that works. Is there anything wrong with two stringing it? Maintain your own buffer of data, append incoming chunks to it, and scan for new lines without converting to string. Oh, I see. I can, but it's wrong. <laughs> I, think, I think this is fine. Um, I'm curious though, I think each of those different JSON objects we're seeing um, comes in as a different event. Yeah, zero, one, two. And so basically we just need to look at that to make sure that it's not an empty buffer. And if it's not an empty buffer, then we parse it. But this is automatically handling the new lines for us, right? Um, this is what I'm thinking. So I was doing all this weird stuff here by like splitting it on new lines. I don't think I need to do that. Um, I think I just need to say um, like if chunk dot length is greater than zero, say event is json dot parse this specific chunk to string like that. I I think this might be all we need. It's not handling the new lines. It just happens that each chunk has one. But I, but that's what it will always have, right? Uh, unexpected token curly brace. Maybe not. Oh, didn't mean to do that. <laughs> it seems like each piece of data is emitted on a new line, though. I don't know. I mean, the way I was handling it before is when the data comes in, I split it on new lines and then parse anything um, from that, which is, I mean, kind of what we need to do. It's basically exactly the same as before, but uh, a little less verbose in how we have to call it. Multiple JSON documents inside one chunk or single JSON split over multiple chunks. Would that happen though? I think that's the main scenario we would need to worry about is um, multiple JSON items appearing across multiple chunks or a single one appearing across multiple chunks. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, I see what you all are saying. Um, but uh, also this will do it just like it did before because then we get each each specific one uh, That's fine. I think what we need to do is we um, We kind of need to wrap this in a nice little uh, stream emitter because so this is listening for Challenge events now we want to listen for game events and it's gonna be exactly the same um, The code is a little bit wrong <laughs> but I think it's gonna work enough. I did keep learning. Yeah, I got a haircut. I'm pretty much reassembling packets. Yeah, but it, it, in this case, each packet is a full JSON object. I guess, okay, we might run into this whenever we attempt to listen for game state because game state might be a giant object that is split across multiple chunks. 
Actually, don't need this. Well, we were getting uh, zero byte arrays, which is why I decided to do that. <laughs> Leave a comment explaining the issue. To do. This will probably break if a JSON object is split across multiple chunks. There we go. Okay. But what I want to do is I want to take this and put it into a function that can listen on a stream for a given URL and then event uh, emit events because then we can re we can start to reuse it. Um, yeah, I think I think if we run into issues, it's going to be now when we're listening for game events. Um, okay, so let's do. Um, we can have a function called uh, stream URL. It's going to pass in the URL. Uh, William Cameron, thank you very much for that resub, who says, thanks for being awesome. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you for your support. Um, so we pass in the URL. Uh, I think we need to pass in the method, too, because it, is it always a git? Stream, but I think it's always a git. We're going to assume it's always a git. So uh, we get to pass in the URL. Uh, we're going to create an event emitter. Do I, need, I, do I need to require this in, or is that just a global? Uh, and then we're actually going to... Um, return the... We're going to do all of this behind, like in a background thread, and we're going to return the emitter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap all of this... Um, Here, this is not going to be an async function. It's going to be a regular function that just immediately returns an emitter, and then we can listen for data on that emitter. Uh, and uh, senior, just easy. <laughs> Thank you very much for that Twitch Prime sub. Uh, but I'm gonna have a little iffy here. So this uh, this function just immediately gets invoked. So that's going to happen behind the scenes. Um, but ultimately. Um, this function will just return an emitter. And now that we have access to the emitter, when an event happens, um, we'll say uh, emitter dot emit uh, event event. Yeah, it's just an event, <laughs> um, like this. Great. This is our nice little reusable thing, and now we can use it here. So I can say um, challenges equals uh, stream URL with this. And then I'll say challenges.on event. Then we get access to the event. And we can do uh, this stuff here. Like this. Uh, call it a proper name with an emitter name, like challenge or game. Well, I mean, technically I could emit event.type, but I'm trying... So I'm going to be listening on two different streams. This stream is for challenges. Um, and then... Um, we're going to have another stream for game state. Doc has a very interesting approach. Why emit when you can async yield? Stop it. <laughs> this, this is going to work just fine. Um, so listen challenges is going to use that stream URL function. This should, this should behave exactly the same way. Let's see. Yeah, so that's great. But now we can reuse this function, or yeah, reuse the stream URL thing to stream ga the game state. Um, Yeah, so actually this does accept challenge. Um, that's fine. Uh, we're actually not going to... Yeah, so we accept the challenge. Um, and then we'll say if event.type equals um, game start, then we will say start game with the event.
and then start game, which we have here. Now is where we need to uh, do the streaming thing. Um, so we have event.game.id is the game ID. Um, and then we need to listen to it. So we'll say game equals uh, stream URL like this, but it's going to have the game info on it. Um, yeah, so stream the game state, which is API bot game stream game ID. API bot game stream game ID like that and then when there is a an event um, we'll log it so um, oh uh, I guess we'll call this game event so this should we should see the first thing we see should should be the game fool and then we should see some any some game state uh what was the command to appear in the stream bubble like oh uh in, so if you're a if you're a sub or a mod or a vip the first time you say anything in the chat it's going to pop up and say it's going to welcome you in that's what that that's what's happening there uh listen to yodas what is what does uh, yo dad say <laughs> listen to yo dad Yo dad 27. What is yo dad 27 saying? There is no user with that name. But Okay, uh this should just work. <laughs> this is this is going to work beautifully. We should get the full game state. Emit is synchronous, right? So if you call it there you're holding up prefer an async yield. Oh, doc D27. <laughs> no, it's fine. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. It's going to overcomplicate things. Awesome. Here we go. So, um, this was the challenge event and then we got, uh, the game event. Uh, we have the variant, the speed when it was created, who's white, who's black, and then the current state. Um, moves is completely empty. <laughs> Rip. It's, it's working. It's, it's fine. It's good enough. It's working. Um, we basically need to know who's, whose turn it is. Um, I don't know if we can get that. Just a second. Initial FEN? Okay. I think what we need to check. Initial FEN. Uh, what is what does that even mean? Well, yeah, I, I know. <laughs> I know that white starts always, but I guess that's what we need to check. So we need to check if uh, white dot um title equals bot then it's our turn like in the and if the game just started then it's our turn oh forward edwards notation okay Okay, so basically what we need to determine is if it, if it's the bot's turn. And in this case, if we look at if we look at the game, um it is the bot's turn because the bot is white, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um Okay. Yeah, I finished the uh, merge sort algorithm earlier. It was a little little jank, but it still worked. So if white.id equals the 
bot's name. Um, I'm actually just going to go with title is bot. <laughs> um, I guess technically you could have two bots playing each other, but in this case, this bot is only for playing against me. Um, okay, so we get a game event. So, um, uh, if game event dot type is game fool. Um, and I, I, we kind of need some, like, our own game state here. Um, or maybe we keep, because I think it's going to emit the state every time it changes. Um, so we'll start it off as nothing. And then we'll say if there is no game state, then game event type is equal to game. If it's the full game state, then we're going to say games. No, no. Here. Game state equals that entire thing. Um, why is this complaining? That's fine. Uh, but we'll say if we don't have a previous game state, then um, we determine whose turn it is. <laughs> I'll figure it out. Go with ID always when you get the choice. Yeah, I guess that's true. Um, so if there is no game state and game event dot white dot um, ID is equal to um, we'll create an environment variable uh, bot name. So if that's the case, then um, we'll say uh, listen for moves because it's our turn <laughs> and basically listen moves is going to listen to twitch chat um and uh figure out what moves people have voted for and then it's going to make a move from there something like that oh yeah yeah, yeah. but uh basically if the, if it didn't exist before, then that means that this is a brand new game that it, that is just starting, um, because I believe the full game state is going to get emitted every time things change. Um, so, if there wasn't one before, and we are white, then it is our turn to make a move. Something like make move. Um. I guess, is there a way to determine like whose turn it is? Thank you, thank you, uh, Smeagol. <laughs> um, wait, did I do game full wrong? Game full with a capital F. Thank you. Count the number of moves in mod modulus. Uh, oh, it's in the initial. Oh, okay, so starting position mean. So actually, if initial fen equals starting position, and um, white ID is equal to us, then it's our turn. <laughs> but then we, we need to see what this changes to when it's not initial position. Um, okay. We need the bot name. Let me add that to my dotty and V really quick. Um, okay, so this is, this is where I'm at. And uh, Fab, or Fab, thank you very much for that resub. It says, love your coding, keep it up. Well, thank you very much. What's up, uh, Al Hassan? We're writing a bot to play chess on LiChess, but that bot is going to be controlled by Twitch chat. Uh, and at this point, we've accepted the game. Now we're listening for game state updates. Uh, right now, we've determined that it's our move. We'll say bot's turn to move. So we'll do that. 
Um, it should be fine. We should at least see that log to the console. And uh, Mallow, thank you for that sub. I didn't hear the uh, thing happen. Bot's turn to move. <laughs> awesome. So if we want to make a move, let's look at the API. So here we go. We have a make bot move endpoint. Um, so make a move in the game being played with the bot API. Uh, this move can also contain a draw or off draw offer or agreement. Uh, and it has to be in the UCI format, which is like um, this. Cool. YouTube link in the description is broken. Uh, I thought I updated those. They should be should be the latest. Um, here, this this one should work. Yeah, that one will definitely work. Maybe it's cached. Try refreshing the page. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's make a little function that will um, make move with the specific move that we're going to make. Need to make a post request against some URL. Um, usually it's headers and then body, right? The I guess the weird thing is all of their bodies are empty, so I I end up having to do something like this. I couldn't figure out how to do how to make a post request with an empty body in Axios earlier. Um, so something like this, um, but it's gonna go against this URL. Uh, we need the game ID and we need the move like that. So it's going to attempt to make that move. Um, just going to return the data. I'm curious what will happen if we send it like an invalid move. Um, uh, Axios is a library for making HTTP requests. Uh, you can check it out here. Uh, it's an older library. A lot of people are switching to newer things. I've used it for a long time. It works just fine. Um, but it's uh, it's for making HTTP requests. Okay. Um, now let's try sending an invalid move. But uh, Blink, thank you for that prime resub. Got a hype train. Um, Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to call make move with just totally bogus data and see what happens. Um, so it's the bot's term to move. We're going to call make move with the game ID. And ah, let's see what happens. Um, I would hope that this is like an unhandled exception. Actually, let's throw this in a try catch. And then we'll log the error if the move was invalid. But I don't know if, yeah, let's see. So uh, we have a possible 400 response. Let's see. And Martin, Martin is soft. Uh, Martini soft. Thank you very much for the bits. Um, OK. Bot's turn to move. OK, <laughs> and then there was straight up an error. Uh, error invalid UCI. Wow. <laughs> um, I guess I could potentially find like a UCI validator. There's a lot of other play things we could do with this. Uh, Nightshade, thank you for the 100 bits. What about a valid? Yeah, so that's that's the things that we have to start thinking about now. Do I want to validate that given the game state, this is a valid move that can occur? And Razor, thank you for the 200 bits. Y'all are kind, You're very kind. <laughs> um, I think not. I think we're just going to hope that the winner, it's yes, it's Twitch chat. <laughs> I think no. I think we're gonna if if the uh, if Twitch chat does not vote on a valid move, then voting stays open. I think that's all all we're gonna have to do. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. So that there was an error. What about on passant? <laughs> uh, watching me from Emmy. Well, thank you for tuning in. Is this is this a valid uh, UCI regular expression? <laughs> I'm I'm not really mentoring anyone directly right now, uh, Angelique. 
Um, but I do do like an, an hour video chat session every now and then with people that have uh, signed up on Patreon. But even that, I, I'm, I don't have much time these days. Um, okay. Actually, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna return null. Um, and a 200 response is just has okay. Yeah. So I'm actually going to return okay false. We're gonna we're gonna normalize this. So if this was successful, okay is true. Otherwise, uh, it's not. So what we could do. Um, result equals await make move. And we'll say if result dot okay. Actually, do we even even care if it was okay? Um, I guess we do because we would get a game state update. If result is not okay, um, something like. Still, bot's turn to move. <laughs> and Martini Soft, thank you for the bits. Big cheers for Regex, my favorite insane language. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if the fen is start position, I yeah. So um, this is kind of handling that right now because if game state didn't exist, then this technically is the first move. Um, but yeah. I, I'm, I just don't know what uh, the f uh, had it earlier, but there's like the, f the fin, fin state. Where is it? Um, no, I didn't see it. That's a great description of what we're doing, Jules. <laughs> yes, we're building a bot. Chat, Twitch chat gets to, to type a valid chess move in the chat. It's going to tally up all the moves, the one with the most votes. The bot will literally move. And so right now, uh, we have a game started with this bot. Um, and what we need to do is we need to listen in Twitch chat for uh, moves and then make those moves after a certain amount of time. Um, but right now I'm just checking, like I'm working with their API and seeing what happens. Like if I send an invalid move, I'm contemplating if we want to validate the moves based on the game state or based on the format. I don't think we're going to, I think we're going to, um, just hope that Twitch chat does their best. And if they don't, then they, they, um, uh, we keep listening for another valid move. Yeah, so we would basically need to create a chess engine if we wanted to say if it's a valid move. Like, uh, like for instance, you can't move a piece that would put your king in check. Uh, and so we would need to know the state of the board and then run, a, run all the rules to see if what they're asking is a valid move. I, we're not going to do any of that. Yeah, we're not going to do any of that. <laughs> Sending loads of invalid moves locks you out of lie chess. Implement your own move validation. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, we could, yeah, I, actually, I think... Um, we, we, when we're listening to Twitch chat, we will do a simple regular expression to make sure it matches the UCI format. Um, I'm actually just going to look this. Look, let's look this up. UCI format. Chess UCI format. Universal chess interface. Examples. E2, E4. Oh, so that's from one space to another space? Yeah, and then e7 to e8. So a pawn goes from e7 to e8 and gets promoted to a queen. Um, short castling, e1, g1. I also saw the notation for castling was like 0 0. I don't know if. Uh, yeah, but. I have not looked at the uh, the fall challenge. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, um, short castle is o o long is o o o. Okay. Um, honestly, we don't need to do the validation until it's uh, 
uh, still we're listening to Twitch chat. All right. Yeah, so it sent an invalid move. It's still the bot's turn to move. At this point, we need to introduce TMI so we can actually listen for moves. And then I'll do like move validation and stuff like that. Um, or in simple validation. Make sure it's in UCI format. That's all we're going to do. Um, okay. I need to install TMI. So TMI. Um, .js is the Twitch messaging interface. Uh, it's a library for talking to Twitch chat. Um, and so what we need to do is establish a connection and listen for messages in my channel. Um, so TMI is required TMI.js. It's great. Um, and then um, we need to connect. And I think we'll just connect instantly when the bot spins up. I think you say uh, Twitch client equals TMI.client. And then we pass in our options. What are our options? I don't know. Let's go to TMIJS.com. Yes. <laughs> this gives us like a really quick uh, getting started. Uh, and in our case, uh, we can just use an anonymous connection uh, because um, we're just listening for messages in my Twitch chat. We don't, we're not sending messages, so we don't need to log in. Um, so we just need to do this. And then the channel is going to be the, the Twitch channel. In this case, coding garden, but I'm going to throw it in my uh, environment variables. Uh, give me a second. I'm going to update. My ENV, Jello. What's up, Tic Tac Toe Tac? <laughs> um, cool. So. Uh, Twitch channel is in my .env, so when this thing spins up, um, it is going to listen for messages in um, uh, in my channel, in my, in my Twitch channel. Um, yeah, we could do. Uh, well, actually, actually, we do need to do client.connect. We'll just do that when the when the bot spins up, and then we need to listen for messages. Now, the way we're writing this right now could potentially be playing multiple games at the same time. Um, but in this case, it's kind of, it's only going to play one. So I think what we need to do um, is we start listening for messages when the game starts. If that makes sense. There's probably a better way to structure this code, but uh, start listening for game events and then when this gets a message, channel tags message self. Don't need self. Um, you can have something like uh, move choices. And that's just going to be an object with counts. <laughs> it's going to be a map with counts. Um, and if the, um, and actually we could do something like also have uh, what players have made a move. It's also going to, that's just going to be a set. Um, and so we'll say if, um, and actually for now, I'm just going to log all of the, the message tags. So you, we, so we can, we can see what we get back, but tags should have, uh, like username. So we can see what message, what user sent that message. Um, yeah. What's the difference between a set and a mat? A set is like a unique list of values. I'm going to say a unique set of values, but it's a unique list of values. A map is kind of like an object. It's like a dictionary. A map goes from one thing to another. So it can map strings to objects or numbers to objects or strings to numbers, that kind of thing. Whereas this is just going to be 
uh, all the unique player names. So we make sure that a player can't vote for a move twice. Um, cool. Well, well, we'll start this off. If message um, that matches the regular expression, um, play, move. No, move followed by a space. Then we're going to log that. Cool. Uh, why should we use maps over objects? Uh, the main thing is uh, because I'm going to be accessing dynamic properties. Well, in this case, that's why I'm using a set. Um, I'm going to be accessing potentially dynamic properties to see does this set have the given username? But if you just did something like um, if players at tags dot, oh, well, username <laughs> like that. Um, if they're already in there, if the username was constructor, then you run into um, some potential security issues. Uh, I don't know, is there a Twitch username uh, that is constructor? And Jorge, thank you for that six month resub. Twitch.tv slash constructor. Wow. Yeah. So this would <laughs> so if this user was in my chat, it they they would potentially access the object constructor uh, if I were to use bracket notation. Whereas it's much safer to say if players dot has tags dot username, that kind of thing. Uh, which is why I would use a set or a map. Um, we, we have a lot of uh, tricksters in the chat, so you gotta do, I gotta do things like this. Okay, this should be, this should be enough. Let me restart this thing. Uh, here it goes. Um, now it's listening in the, ch in the Twitch chat. So if you send a message that starts with exclamation mark move, so if you do exclamation mark move E2, E4, yeah. I, am I here? Yeah, yeah. So it's working. But what I mainly wanted to look at was this tag stuff, um, because they care about the username. I think that's all I care about. <laughs> I guess I could use, I could technically, I'll, I'll use the user ID because uh, then we can make sure that users only vote once. Um, so uh, if the message is move and uh, players does not have tags at uh, user ID, let me just throw that in variable. So if a player has not already uh, suggested a move, then we're going to add it to the move choices. Um, does this need to be a map? Yeah, because we're going to keep track of the number of people that have voted for that specific move choice. Um, now, I think to make this simple enough, players can only vote for a move once. Like you can't change your mind. And I think that's gonna help with like some of the better chess players influencing what other people should vote for anyways. Um, so you can only vote once on any given turn. Um, and yeah, we'll make this case insensitive. And then we'll two lowercase it. Actually, no. It's too lowercase it. Then we don't have to do that, and then the move will already be in lowercase. Move, move. <laughs> um, this is just complaining because I'm reassigning a parameter. Yeah, I don't care about that. Um, okay. Make sure to clear it after the... Yeah, yeah. So, basically, these two things are going to get reset on every turn. Um... And then we'll say uh, the move is going to be message dot um, we'll store this because we're going to reuse it matches and then we can do that followed by um, One or more of A to Z, not A to Z, A through F, G? How many letters are there? G <laughs> on a chessboard is G, right? A to G? H. H? Okay. Um, zero through nine. 
Right, or no, and then it's uh, one through nine. <laughs> What's up, the good idea, Co? Uh, so, <laughs> a move uh, it just can include these things. A through H, one through nine, followed by A through H, one through nine. So it's not zero or more. It's literally this. Right? One, oh, one to eight. Inclusive, yeah, yeah, makes sense. I, I'm, I am not in a band. <laughs> what about turning a queen into castling? Oh, true. And so then it's possible that um, there's a letter on the end there. But wait, are we handling castling? Oh, no, I, di I didn't talk about prototypes. No, we'll do that another time. Um, Because castling is 0 0, isn't it? Oh, and then the letter on the end is not A through H. It's uh, queen, bishop, knight, rook. I guess technically you could trade a pawn for a pawn, couldn't you? <laughs> um, oh, knight is in. That would make sense. Uh, in Q, B, R. <laughs> and then uh, this part here is uh, optional. That's why I do that, right? So just to say that the last letter is optional. Right? This does support castling. So I guess what, um, start case, end case? Oh yeah, 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 so it starts with, ends with. I like that. Starts with, ends with. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, that should do it. And so uh, if matches is a thing, the move is gonna be matches at one. Um, and then we'll just log. Um, the user ID and the move that they decided to make. <laughs> is this the reg is this the regular expression? There's no way I'm putting that in my code. <laughs> uh, no worries, drill. I'm I'm seeing. I, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I'll I'll figure out the time limit. Right now, I just want to make sure that we can listen to chat and see what their moves are. Okay, so give it a second. All right. Now, if you do exclamation mark move followed by a valid chess move, should show up. Yeah, so this user did E2, E4. Great, great job. Um, if anybody, I guess uh, mods can let me know if someone does something that's not valid, or that is valid, but it's not showing up. According to Stack Overflow, that's the regex. All right, I might actually use it then. Um, UCI chess regex. Clicky keyboard. Uh, there is a chess programming wiki. I wonder if they have a regular expression. Regex challenge, custom chess notation. Oh, well, it's called, it's UCI format is the name of it, right? Yeah, we're we're not right now. We're not going to handle if it is a valid move. We're just going to handle if it's a if it's in a valid format. Uh, the light the uh, Lee Chess API is going to tell us if it was a bad move. <laughs> well, welcome. Uh, life hates me sometimes. <laughs> I'm pretty sure some of those moves were invalid. No, but were they in the right format? Um, G1 F3 Knight. <laughs> I guess technically, if if they are. Um, if they're uh, converting, I don't know the right terminology. If you're converting a pawn to a queen, uh, then it's always going to be one specific. Uh, like the number always has to be eight, right? Or seven? <laughs> seven, yeah. Seven, eight, or two to one. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, it's good to hear uh, PWA Southside. This is fine. <laughs> I think this is fine. Uh, E2, E4. Um, okay, so here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to listen for... Yeah, we're listening for moves. Um, we're going to say uh, players dot add user id and we're going to say um move choices so if move choices dot has this move actually if it if move choices does not have this move then we'll say um move choices dot um uh, set this move with the value one, because one person has voted for it. Um, or no, we'll just do it to zero. And then here we'll say set move to itself plus one. Like that. Cool. Now on every move, we should see uh, the move choices. Cool. <laughs> Big brain. No, <laughs> it's, we're, we're writing. So uh, in the Twitch chat now, you all can try this exclamation mark move followed by some valid chess notation. And now this is going to keep track of the number of occurrences. So if multiple people vote for E2, E2, um, the number goes up. See, so we have three votes for E2, E2, one vote for E1, E2, uh, etc. Uh, and basically, after a certain amount of time, we're going to pick the one with the most votes, and that's what we're going to send to the API. So right now, uh, this bot is just waiting to make a move. Um, and it looks like it's going to be E2, E2, uh, which is E2. Wait, what? <laughs> it's just, it's, that, that means nothing. Stay in, your, stay in your place. This is what we're going to run into, honestly, but... Uh, it'll send that to the API. If it wasn't a valid move, it's going to try E1, E2. <laughs> if we look at uh, E1, E2, that's also not a valid move. Um, so... King, stay, stay in your lane, King. <laughs> I, okay. <laughs> uh, if you do exclamation mark keyboard, you can get a link to my keyboard. Um, I mean, now, now you all are making making me think that I should validate moves. Um, I mean, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send it to the API. And if the API says, hey, that's not a valid move, then I'm going to wait a few seconds and send the next most voted one. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's all I'm going to do. Okay. So um, uh, import chess.js and validate it easily. Revive Newt. Thank you for that sub tier three sub morning great day to celebrate a six month subversary yeah thanks for being here um no we're not we're not going to validate moves <laughs> we're just going to add it to move choices so i think this is fine so here's here's what we need to do when it's the bots turn to move we're going to reset the move choices and the players to be empty so when it's the bots turn um we reset them, and then it's going to continue listening. And then um, um, we will pick the top move choice. Yeah. Chess JS, just do it. I want, I want to, like, I want chat to at least, you all can help me. I mean, you could do this. You can move this pawn here. That would be uh, E2 to E4. Classic chess opening, E2, E4. If everyone votes for that, we could see it happen live and in real time. <laughs> so um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to set a timeout. Um, so let's let's give chat 10 seconds. So 10 seconds, and then we're going to make a move with whatever the most popular mo move is. So uh, if the result was not okay, I'm going to say... Bad move! Still bot's turn to move, and then we'll figure out how we recall this function or something like that. Um, so we need to figure out the uh, top choice 
Um, how are we going to do that? Nice little coding challenge. So we have a map that goes from moves to um, a number of votes. And we kind of just need to sort it by number of votes. Can you do dot, dot entries? Uh, and that, that returns uh, an iterator. So we put it into an array and then sort it because then we get the move and the count. Um, move A, count A. And then we also get the uh, move B, count B. And we want to sort it greatest to least and grab the first one. So if I say uh, count B minus count A, that should sort it um, least to greatest, I think. Um, we don't need the move. We just need the count. Uh, and then we'll just log moves. Should be sorted. Yeah, so this should give us the moves in sorted order. We're not actually going to make the move just yet. I just want to see it logged out after 10 seconds. Um, and we'll log the move choices on every valid move. All right. So going to restart it. For those of you that have no idea how to play chess, uh, the the what you should do is just type exclamation mark move E2, E4. That's all you got to do. Um, and then we should see that that's the most voted thing. And then eventually, uh, so somebody did uh, G1 to F3. What's that? I'm trying to figure, like, uh, I'm trying to start to memorize my chess notation. Uh, G, maybe it's, uh, G, G1, G1, F, Three? Wait, what? Yeah, move the knight. <laughs> move the knight. <laughs> I'm using I'm using JavaScript. Yeah, so we can see here that um, e2 e4 has 18 votes. So after 10 seconds, we should see a sorted list that has that move at the top, and then we're gonna send that move to the API. G1 f3 knights out. <laughs> and uh, what we mentioned is you can only vote once, um, and you can't change your vote. I guess I should lower it to probably like five seconds. I probably should lower it. When we start playing a real game, I guess technically this is a real game. It's a test game. <laughs> but when we, when we start playing it, I should give chat, I don't know, a minute to decide? It is a long 10 seconds. Did it work? <laughs> Maybe it's it already happened. Oh, it already happened. Yeah, yeah. And at that point, E2, it already happened. <laughs> At that point, E2, E4 was the most popular move. And so our, our sort algorithm did work. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, for now, you get we're gonna do you get one minute per move. One minute. Um I'm going to make this little function to uh, listen for moves. Um, and listening for moves resets the move choices. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so here's how it's going to work. Um, if the most voted move is an invalid move, then the the votes are going to get wiped out and you have another 10 seconds to listen for votes. Um, I think I also need to keep track of, like, is it chat's turn? Um, chat turn is initially false. And then if it is... Not chat's turn. We don't do any of this. Don't don't even listen to the chat. Um, but 
like in this scenario where there is no game state and the ID, the white's ID is equal to the bot, then technically chat's turn is equal to true. We're going to listen for moves. Um, uh, we need to grab the first move to get the actual move info. So move at zero. So we'll just log here. Uh, making move. Like this. <laughs> Bad move, still bots turn to play. And then uh, we'll listen for moves again. And actually we'll accept the time. We'll, it, we'll, give, the, we'll give chat less and less time every time. So. Um, We'll actually pass in the number of milliseconds. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll default to one minute. But if chat messed up, then uh, you get half the amount of time to vote again. How about that? Move was made. All right. Um, what we also need to handle now is when it's no longer white. So like, uh, what I don't know yet is, so this is because the game just started, we basically have a game start event with the full game state, and we have determined that it is the bot's turn to move because they're white and they need to go first. But also we're listening for when the game state gets updated. Um, let's just log here, uh, game state update. And what I'm thinking is after we make a successful move, we should actually get the latest game state again. And then we need to look at the properties to determine, like, is it our turn? Because it's not the very first turn. Yeah. Okay. I am mean. What do you mean? <laughs> uh, less time in the opening and more time in the end game. I think we could create a whole feature list of ways that this could work. But yeah, I, I like that. So basically... Early on, you don't chat has to be really quick, but later on we give them we give you all more time to vote. All right. Moment of truth. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this. We're gonna put it right here. We're gonna take my terminal. And we're gonna put it right here. And then we're gonna reset it. Actually, I'll I'll do this. Yeah, so it's out. Kill it. Back to the game. Okay, so here's the game. Here is uh, uh, chat, the chat bot. I'm going to start it up, and then you can do exclamation mark play, followed by a valid move. And then after one minute, it's going to send that move to the API um, here. And if it was a valid move, uh, it'll be my turn to play. <laughs> this is this is it. This is the moment you've all been waiting for. Where Twitch chat is about to make a move in the chessboard. Are you ready? Uh, game state update. Wait, what? Oh, here we go. Okay, so people are voting. That's good. E2 to E4 is pretty common. It seems like it seems like it's the winner. Uh, G one F three has five votes, but yeah, E two to E four would just be the, the the king pawn moving forward like that. One minute is a long time. <laughs> G one F three. Nice. <laughs> he broke. <laughs> uh, making move undefined. <laughs> um, so we sort the array. <laughs> 
if we if we shift the array, that should give us the first one in the array, right? Yeah, we're, we're, I'm gonna lower the timer because that, that didn't work. Um. Oh well. Uh, the reason it's move at zero is because it's an array that has the move and the count. Moves, sort the array, uh, and then, um, yeah, I guess the other thing is we'll, we'll turn off that it's chat's turn. Oh, and I just, something just happened. I'm sorry. <laughs> Extremely distracted. Um, something happened, uh, as Rob, thank you for the resub. What's the actual difference between reactive and ref in value? Uh, mainly reactive allows you to pass in, um, an object with multiple properties, whereas ref is typically used for like a single value. That's like a primitive type, like a, um, a string or a number or something like that. Um, moves is empty. All right, let's fix this. Um, well, first of all, if it was a successful move, chat turns equals false. Oh, I reset them here. Yeah, I don't want to reset them. I want to reset them. Um, oh, I want to reset them here, right? Bad move, still bot's turn to move. Reset them. If a move was made, I mean, technically we want to set reset them. If a move was made too, because next time. They get reset here. <laughs> yes, <laughs> after the FLs. Um, stop! Hey, hey, hey! No, no politics. Uh, we will stop uh, the count for for voting for chess moves. Yeah, I think I think that, that was the issue. I, I literally emptied this thing out um, before accessing it. Okay, this is gonna work, and uh, we're actually gonna give you ten seconds to vote on the move. Are you ready? Here we go. Ten. You get ten seconds. Here we go. Wait, not yet. Not yet. Wait for it. Okay. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> so it made uh, E two E four. Sick. Move was made. Nice. But we didn't get a game state update. <laughs> so what I was expecting was um, we now receive the fact that a move has been made. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then we can determine whose turn it is. We did it. Yeah. It's dope. Oh, is this it? No, that can't be it. Um, okay. <clears throat> yeah, there's a bug in the recursive case since the moves won't reset, but you also don't use recursive. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, no, no, no. Now, now I need to answer because this is technically just, it's Twitch chat versus me. Um, so, oh, wait. Oh, this is me. Never mind. So I can make my move now. Um, oh, okay. Um, I got a challenge from uh, Katra. Thank you for the challenge. <laughs> uh, so I guess the move was made, and then now uh, if I make a move, let's see if we get a game state update. Maybe. We don't get a game state update. Because this is the initial uh, full game state uh, with starting position. <laughs> Did those JSON chunks ruin our day? I don't know. Um, we got a challenge. Capture, capture, take. I mean, I would think 
uh, game state would now be, it would have like moves. Oh, yeah, maybe I'm only logging it if it's the full game state. Yep. <laughs> game tight event equals game full. Um, so it's just going to be an update. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's, I think that's the issue is um, we need to just log it every time. To see what the types are. Okay. So, um, yeah, let's see what happens here. And we're not going to log the challenge events anymore because we don't really care about those. Um, I guess, well, well, now I'm curious. Uh, because the game has already started, game start, we're going to call start game. Start game is going to listen for events. Oh, okay. Because we've already accepted the challenge. Should be fine. Should be fine. Um... So we got the full game state. Um, and how do we determine whose move it is? Is there an easy way to just to say, is it White's turn or is it Black's turn? I think like, we could look at potentially the moves property, split on spaces, mod two. Yeah. That's what we'll do. Because otherwise, like right now, my logic is if there was no game state before, but then that, that breaks down if the bot was not running when it all happened. Um, okay. Okay. So, um, and initially games, uh, initially, um, this value state dot moves is an empty string. And if it's an empty string, then it's an empty array and zero mod two is zero. <laughs> Don't split, just count the spaces. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so uh, if the event type is full, the turn is um, game event dot state dot moves. Um, how can I count all the spaces? See the number of occurrences of spaces. I mean, what I was thinking is if we just, um, all moves is that and then split on space. Now all moves is gonna be an array. Um, if it's the empty string, it's an empty array. Uh, and then we take the length mod two, and that's if it's one, then it's white's turn, and if it's two, it's black's turn. No, if it's zero, it's white's turn. If it's one, it's black's turn. Right? <laughs> um, yes, all moves uh, dot length mod two. If turn equals zero, and um, and we are white, then it's our turn. Else, if turn equals one and we are black, then it's our turn. Here we go. I got this. So if turn equals zero and uh, we are white, then it's our turn. 
or the exact same thing with turn equals one. And then all of this code goes in here. Should do it, huh? Um, I guess what I'm curious about, though, is if the event type isn't full, what is it? Yeah, yeah, then we then we don't well actually I'm I'm using that in my Twitch listener because this is just returning early early. Like technically it could still build this up. It shouldn't really matter. Um Yeah. Remove the or after the condition. Oh yes, you're right. Thank you. Uh LT Nightshade. What does it want? That. It wants that. Okay. Um Let's just log uh, chat turn. Early returns are cleaner. I I would agree with that. <laughs> I just um, let's uh, let's keep going. Kill it. Start it. No oh, no no, not that. Here we go, it's chat's turn. Okay, so now chat can vote. You have, I think you have 10 seconds to vote. Uh, exclamation mark play followed by a valid move. Um, bad move, it's still your turn. You have, now you have five seconds to go. <laughs> G1, F3, great. Move was made and now we get, oh, that was great. Um, the type here is, if, if the type is game state, then it's not the full game. Okay, I know what to do. Um, So uh, if call this game state, and if game event type is equal to game full, then game state is equal to game event dot state. Uh, otherwise, it's literally just the game event like that, and then we don't even need a uh, if statement. So anytime we get an event, grab the game state. Done. This is it. <laughs> now, now we can play a game. Uh, you're going to get 60 seconds per move. Let's go, Twitch. Are you ready? All right, restart the bot. Uh, okay, so it's not. It's not. Um, actually, let's just log if it's white turn. Else... CJ's turn. Okay. Kill it. Restart it. Yeah, uh, absolutely. One minute is uh, is not long at all. Um, but here we go. <laughs> 60 is right. No, here we go. It's us, us versus you. So I'm going to go there. And then it broke. Um, cannot read property ID. Oh, oh. Um, we need to hold on to... Um, the original uh, game state. We'll call it the full game state, which includes who's white and who is black. Uh, initially, it has no value. But if the event we got was full, then uh, the full game state is equal to that. Um, and then that's where we can get access to is it white or is it black? I don't think there's anywhere else where we're doing that. Should be fine. <laughs> this is the one. <laughs> okay, chat's turn. <laughs> um, F3 to E5. E, yeah, that would be taking this pawn. Uh, B1 to C3. 
B1 would uh, would bring out the knight. That's great. Uh, D2 to D4. It's tied for F3 to E5. E5. Um, I didn't figure out what to do in the event of a tie. Somebody break that tie. <laughs> um, I think it's just going to pick the first one. Yeah, <laughs> right now we're not breaking ties. Uh, D2 to D4. So D2. Wait, what? D No, D2. D4. Oh, that would bring the pawn out here. Yeah. Bruh. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Twitch chat just made a move. They literally they just made a move in the in chess. Great. Um now I'm gonna go here. It's your turn, chat. You have 60 seconds to decide. What are you gonna do? Tiebreaker? Oh wait, 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 wait. What did you say about tiebreaking <laughs> drills? Um, yeah. Oh, what's up, Chill Medicine? Just tuning in? Yeah, yeah. so, uh, sorry, I, I missed some chats. We were, we were coding, but uh, Lee Chess has an open API that you can use. Um, the, in the f yeah, that's what I'm going for. I, I showed this, I actually showed this earlier. I'm, I'm just learning about chess, and I just learned about the Stafford Gambit, and it's really cool, and I'm hoping... I'm hoping that, yes, they take... I'm hoping that they take the knight. That's the Stafford Gambit accepted. Um... And uh, it's got seven votes, so we're about to go there. <laughs> I guess I, I could show a countdown. That would be cool. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, Lee Chess has an awesome API. Um, and uh, we created a bot account. But yes, so this is Stafford Gambit accepted. Um, I'm not going to move <laughs> just yet because chat only has a minute to, to go. But uh, we created uh, an account. We used their API to convert it to a bot account. So they specifically have... Um, cause like, uh, lead chess, they don't want you creating bots that aren't claimed to be bots. And then they're using like AI and stuff like that. Any bot should be labeled as a bot. So we created a bot account. Uh, right now it's only accepting challenges from me. And then it's listening locally for moves. Yeah. Been bamboozled. <laughs> if we can't move, it's not our turn. Um, I, I can't, I don't think I can, you can forfeit a turn. Basically what I've done now is if there are, if the most voted move was not a valid move uh, at the end of 60 seconds, all of the votes reset and chat now has half the time. So you have 30 seconds to vote for a move. Um, it's very possible that <laughs> you keep you keep get, sending bad moves and then the time goes way, way, way down. Um, and then I don't know what to do in that scenario because chat wouldn't be able to respond with a move in time. I don't know. We'll figure this out. I literally just... I literally just um, Built this thing, but okay. Let's let's checkmate chat with the Stafford Gambit. Here we go. All right, chat's turn. You got sixty seconds to vote on a move. We can do a random move, yeah. But also, we haven't added any sort of uh, chess library for. Um, once you be, to be able to see the voted on moves, but I, I haven't added any libraries for uh, like validating the moves because um, there are libraries where you could pass in the game state. And it can tell you if a given move is valid given the state of the board. All right, so B1, C3 would be to bring the knight out. Uh, D2, D3 has um, <laughs> quite quite a few votes. Classic. This is this is, I, I've again I mentioned it earlier. I have no idea when it comes to chess, but I've watched YouTube videos, and they say this is how a grandmaster plays. They a grandmaster will bring out this pawn. Don't let the queen come in. <laughs> <clears throat> actually, the uh, um, actually, actually, chat. Um, uh, humor me. I'm gonna make a move. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you, you uh, the chat is playing white. I want to make a move, but you should definitely move your bishop. Uh, right about here. <laughs> um. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh what what is it? Is it here? No, it's I have to remember what the move is. 
it's a trap it is a trap but I, it's a really fun trap <laughs> um I think I want to go here. Yeah, I want to check you. Check. <laughs> I think I think that's right. It's your turn. You got sixty seconds. Oh, actually, no, no, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's <laughs> no, that was was that right? That's probably wrong. I don't know. Uh, but Alex is asking, how would I create such a library uh, with if else? You mean for like um, uh, like a chess game validation library? Um, actually, I think this was a bad move. I think I wanted my bishop to be right here. <laughs> that was wrong. <laughs> um, it looks like b1 to c3 and c2 to c3 are both winning. I shouldn't, I definitely should not have done that. Um, bishop c5, yeah, I should have gone here. I'm going to backtrack. <laughs> C2 to C3. Uh, C, maybe C2, C3. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's fine. Now I'm going there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the, the notation has to be uh, from, from one square to another. It's not... Because I've seen also seen notation that's like uh, B C three, which would be bishop bishop two C three. But in this case, you have to specify where it's coming from to where it's going to. Yeah. Insta fluff. What's up? <laughs> thank you for that resub. Uh, seven months. That's awesome. He says, "Whoa, that's a great haircut." Well, thank you. Cut my hairs off. Um, and right now we're playing chess with chat. So in the chat, you can do exclamation mark play. Uh, you, you're white. You are white. Uh, followed by the move that you want to make. It looks like right now F1 to E2 is winning. So um, F1, F1, E2. Wait, what? That's not valid. <laughs> um, okay, C1 to G5, 1. Great. Great. Um, yeah, now, now I'm in a bit of a spot. I'm in a bit of a spot because I, I really actually want to do... Um, yeah, so right now we're, we're not validating the moves. That's the next step is to like add a library that um, validates moves based on game state and also validates, yeah, all that good stuff. Right now, it just has to be a valid notation. But I, th I think this is right. Yeah, this is right. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to take there. Now, should you should you take my queen? Should you take my queen? You probably should take my queen. It's right there. I think you need to take my queen. <laughs> um I don't know. <sighs> yeah. Okay. I know what to do now. I know what to do. And our, it's okay. So uh, C3 to E4 is the current winner, uh, which is to take my knight. Stop trying to take my knight. <laughs> Don't take my knight. Uh, G5 to D8. You definitely want to do G5 to D8. You definitely do. Uh, Instaflow says, I would lose this so fast. I'll leave this to the expert players in chat. I, I think that's the, the interesting part is like if you leave it up to chat, um, they make really bad decisions. <laughs> Collectively, they make bad decisions. Okay, great. Uh, check. So now you only have one valid move. <laughs> you only have one valid move, which is uh, E1 to E2. E1, E2. That's the only valid move. So in theory, to create a validation library, you would you would need to encode all the all the rules of chess. Um, for me, it uh, I think of it as uh, object oriented programming. It doesn't have to be, but that's how I think about the problem. Because you could basically have a uh, a board object, 
and that board could have pieces. Pieces have a location on the board. Um, every piece has valid uh, moves. And so, like, you have... It, yeah, so that's the other thing. Chess.js exists, and it, um, um, it, it does all of that for you. And, and um, I don't know if we're still logging it. But the way we're getting the... Uh, check this out. Checkmate. <laughs> uh, okay, I didn't handle... Uh, did we get a game over event? Vote for Ty? <laughs> no, I just won. <laughs> um, yeah, you got wrecked. <laughs> okay, actually, I'm curious what will happen. So I, I think, um... Should have taken the night. Yeah, if you would have taken the night, that would have killed it right there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, let's add uh, resign or draw. So, um, offering draw can get sent in the query parameter. for making a bot move. <laughs> we lose on purpose. <laughs> um, in the game, back to code. Now, I mean, I've been I've been streaming for five hours, so I'm probably gonna end it here. Um, I'm gonna push all this code up. Right now, it's really messy. I just wanted to get at least one game. <laughs> Chat tried to make a move. I just, I wanna get um, at least one game. I wanted to get one game in with it working, and it worked. I played chat. I told you what moves to make, but I still played against you. Um, yeah, and now now it's broken, because um, we need to handle when the game is over. Um, yeah, so I'm using T I'm using uh, a couple of things TMI, and then uh, Axio. So um, TMI listens for a Twitch chat. It's basically an IRC client. And then Axios is an HTTP client. So uh, I'm just looking at these um, API docs for the LeeChess bot API. And this has all of the endpoints we need to hit to make a move, listen for moves, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, and I think technically, like all of these requests that we're making, I think they actually could be done from the front end. Like right now, this is just a node script like running in the terminal. Um, but technically, I think this code could run in the browser as well. So you could have like a web page that has a bot running on it. The only issue with that is you need your uh, Lee Chess bot token, and you wouldn't want to expose that on a web page because you could you can do anything on behalf of the bot with that token. Um, but yeah, here, let me collapse all my functions, and then we can just talk through what this does. It's I'll say it's messy right now. There's definitely a lot of ways that we could clean this up. Um... And we'll do that eventually, including eventually we'll like validate moves and stuff like that. Okay, so it all starts with init. Uh, so we init we init the bot, and init calls listen challenges. So uh, in the Leechess API, they have a stream, a, a new line delimited JSON stream, where you can listen for events. Uh, you basically couldn't hide the token in the browser. Um, you can't because if it needs to be running, I mean, you, you could make it so that you have a web page where somebody can enter their bot token and that way it's not embedded in the source code. Um, but that'd probably be the only way to do it. Um, in my case, it would this code would be running on a backend, so all of it would be hidden anyways. But yeah, we're listening for incoming events. So the, this listen challenges function, um, streams against this URL. And this is what this is what was fun that we did today, which I hadn't worked with before, where basically you make a request to this endpoint and then it just never closes the connection. We're basically opening a socket here and the connection is never closed. The server can send new things if those new things happen um, and it sends them on a new line. And so that's basically how we can listen for if we're challenged to a game. Um, and if we're challenged to a game, and the challenger is me, then 
we accept the challenge. Um, eventually, we could make this bot able be able to play like other people in like other Twitch chats and stuff like that. Um, but right now, it's only listening for challenges from me and only accepting challenges from me. Yeah, <laughs> the connection could close, but I tested it earlier and it stayed open for like 15 minutes. It never went down, so. I don't know. This is all new to me. There's probably things we could do to make sure that it stays open, or if it goes down, we would um, reopen it. But yeah. Uh, I I hope to stream on Monday. That's the plan right now. Oh, you're right. I guess I could decline the challenge. Let's do it. <laughs> that should be easy enough. Uh, we'll write a little decline ca challenge function. So uh, if the challenger ID is me, accept the challenge. Else, decline the challenge. Um, and that is a post request here slash decline. And we have this function accept challenge, which just makes a post request to challenge ID accept. Um, let's do this. We'll say uh, update challenge with um, accept decline. What's a good name for this? <laughs> it's either it's either accept or decline. Um, answer. Here we go. Decision. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna call it answer. So answer defaults to accept. Um, so right here we can just call update challenge. Um, but if the challenger ID was not W3CJ, then we'll pass in decline. Decline. So that should decline any challenges that are not from me. Um, and then we can also, we also get an event called game start. And if that happened, um, then the game, we start listening for Twitch chat and um, we start playing the game. Is for me, <laughs> choice. <laughs> um, I guess technically we could listen for the game finish event. Um, because start game basically starts listening for Twitch chats and playing the game. But then when <clears throat> um, the game is finished, we should probably stop listening to Twitch chat. I don't know. Uh, in game state, um, a field winner. Yeah, I guess. Oh, we could probably scroll up in my terminal to see the game states earlier. Let's see. Status started. <laughs> we should probably stop listening to Twitch chat in general. Doc, you're silly. You're silly. Um, where's the winner property? Oh yeah, shout out to Instafluff, of course, <laughs> of course. Um, had the access method call wrapped in an async method, but don't return the result. Oh, uh, that just allows me to use async await inside of that function. Because otherwise, I, uh, the Axios request, I would have had to have done dot then because it returns a promise. Um, but just because something is async doesn't mean you have to await it. Most of the time, you await it. In my case, I don't need to await it because I'm not really doing anything with the response. <clears throat> See you, client. Thanks for being here. Yeah, I mean, somebody could do that. <laughs> like, somebody could tap into the LeechS API, get the state of the game, determine what is the best move, and then spam that in the Twitch chat. That is definitely a possibility. <laughs> okay, uh, somebody was mentioning that there's like a winner property on the game state, though. I don't see that. Let's see. Um, but... Stream game state, game state, hmm. 
Winner in command. Oh, winner. Okay. I didn't see that on mine, though. Yeah, here. Because uh, the type is game state. And there is no winner property. But I guess it shows up eventually. Yeah. Eventually, there is a winner property. So, um, I guess there's probably also a draw property too, right? Maybe we didn't lose yet. <laughs> um, I just say if there's a winner property, I think that's what I need to do. Um, if game event dot winner is a thing, then we're just going to return. But I kind of need to say game dot um, stop. Like I need to stop listening for events, and then we also need to dis. We need to no longer listen for messages. Is Twitch client dot off a thing? How do I? Hmm. I mean, honestly, <laughs> I could move. Is it remove listener? Yeah. Remove listener message. I probably could just do uh, remove all listeners message like that. So that way I don't have to grab a reference to this function. Um, okay, so uh, if there is a winner, stop listening for messages, stop the game. Um, and then return. Basically, don't do anything else. Uh, now, we need to add stop, the stop function, to game, which gets returned from stream URL. The stream URL creates this event emitter, but what I need to do is say, um, I need to close this connection, right? Um, say, like, uh, emitter dot stop is a function that can I do like response dot close or response dot abort how can I cancel an axios response Set a boolean flag and check that in the loop. Oh, sure. <laughs> uh, so just say let cancel um, equals uh, false. When I say stop, canceled equals true. And then uh, if canceled right here, we uh, break out of the for loop. W will that close the connection, though, if I break out of the for of loop? Yeah, it's very messy. <laughs> and thanks for the host, uh, Onyx. Yeah, that should work because it's going to receive a zero byte buffer. And when it receives the zero byte, it's going to break. Uh, let me just do a log. Um... For that URL. Yeah. It's clean, but broken. Or no, it's, I mean it's <laughs> it's it's not clean at all. I think like I think that should do it. I think we'll play one more game just to see. Then I'll probably end up debugging it. But if there's a winner, stop listening to Twitch chat. Stop listening for game events. We're done. And then um if we 
get another challenge, we're going to accept it. Should be fine. Change the code and use a cancel token? Let's see. Um, cancellation. Would that work for a stream, though? I don't know. I honestly, I I think it's it's fine the way it is. I really think it's okay. Um. Yeah, let's <laughs> let's play one more game. Um. I don't think it'll work. I think it'll work because we get events that are zero bytes, and when it receives the zero byte, it's going to be in that for of loop, and then it's going to break out of the loop, and it won't listen for anything. I mean. If we, I mean, maybe Doc has an opinion on this, but if we break out of this for a wait loop, does that close the connection to this server? Oh, abort. Yeah, I've seen abort controller with fetch, but we're specifically using Axios. Um, yeah. Let's do it. It doesn't look too hard. Um, so we need to create a cancellation source here. So we create a cancellation source. We pass it in as the cancel token. Uh, source dot token. Do I need to do this though? I think I'm still going to do the boolean thing, but I'm also going to do this. listening <laughs> like that uh and thank you alex uh alexandre yeah yeah thanks for being here i mean this should be easy enough right create the source pass in the cancel token um when we call stop cancel it but also this boolean's going to kick in here so at least this won't run and then by canceling it that should close the connection to the server Oh, I see. This would throw an exception when we cancel it. Yeah. Yes. So we got to wrap it in a try catch. Try to do it when it catch um, this. Uh, <laughs> Stream was canceled. Probably. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, that's why I put probably, because it could have been some other error, but that, I think this is fine. <laughs> uh, good enough for now. Let's play another game. Um, there's that. I'm going to... Uh, actually, I'm curious if this will work. So, uh, here. Start it up. Um, and then we just declined all of the other challenges that came in. So that's cool. If I challenge the bot to a rematch, it got it. Um, it, ex it accepted <laughs> it's in its chat's turn, apparently. But where do I where do I see that game at? Um, I 
Uh, game start. D2 to D4? Where's the game? I guess uh, technically I have the ID right here. I could just paste it in. <laughs> uh, there we go, yeah. Um, oh no! It's my turn! Our logic is wrong. <laughs> the, the bot is not... Um, is not... Uh, white this time. We're white. Right? Right. Right? Now, uh, I'm going to kill it because the, the logic is wrong. It thinks that it's its turn, but it's not its turn. Um, we need to log the game event. Love from Brazil. Thank you, uh, Hugos. Much appreciated. Uh, if white ID equals bot name, let's also log the turn. What's up, Mishka? Uh, I cut my hair. <laughs> and I'm not wearing a hat. That's that's what happened. Okay, let's do a little bit of debugging. Um, so at this point, it already accepted the challenge. Um, oh, this this is a bug. Because it technically should be turn zero, right? Because the for whatever reason, the length of the array is um, is one instead of none. If I take an empty string and I split it on spaces, that returns an array with an empty string inside of it. It's not what I want. <laughs> um, I guess I could say if array length equals one and the first element in the array uh, is empty, then it actually shouldn't be in there. Logic. Yeah, that has to do with determining whose move it is. Um, game state, yuck. Yeah, I don't like it. Well, I it's the, technically the string is trimmed. Like, check it out. Like, if I ran this code and I did trim first, it, same thing would happen. Um, actually, I have an idea. <laughs> we'll say um, split it and then filter out anything. Um, that is not truthy, like this. This should do it. There, there we go. Um, okay, check it. Kill it, start it. CJ's turn, there we go. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I love that band. Their first album called Album was awesome and their hit song was magnificent. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so, that's good. I'm going to make a move. I'm going to go uh, here. It's chat's turn. You have 60 seconds to make a move, chat. And it's an exclamation mark move followed by uh, the square you're on and the square you want to go to. So D2, D4 um, would be here. Move wisely. <laughs> uh, C7, C6. C7, C6. Yeah, move that pawn out. That's a move. Can I make the grid coordinates a bit bigger? Um, what do you mean? Oh, like, displayed on... How it's displayed here? I don't think it's not zero indexed, is it? 
Bad move. Okay, D2, D4 was not a good move. You have 30 seconds now, so you have to vote again. D2, D4, 1, and apparently that was not a valid move. Um. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're black. Chat, you're black. You have to move these pieces. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, 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 uh, I agree, actually. Um, there we go. Chat made a move. <laughs> C7 to C5. Nice. Okay. Um, yeah, how do I get these number, these letters to be bigger? I think this is a canvas, isn't it? I don't think there's any way I can increase the font size. Oh, okay, so we have a board. We have squares. Oh, okay, check it. Um, here we go. Files. Uh, font size. Five rim. Nice. Um, <laughs> it's it's really hard to see. <laughs> That's a little better, right? Right? Like that. And then the ranks, very similar. Uh, three rim. Yeah, I mean, I could I could do the Z index <laughs> so it appears on top. Let's do let's just do that. Fine, it should be fine. This is fine. Did that work? Also, make the letters uppercase. How's that, everybody? Is that a little better? Smile in the chat if that helps. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not opposed to making it black. Yeah, let's make it... Or, yeah, something, like, really insanely easy to read. Oh. There's some special CSS that's overriding it. Well, yeah. No. Oh, I could change the variable. CG coordinate color black. This. <laughs> Actually, that's not so bad. Uh, we, yeah, because it's just every other. And that'll make it red. Cool. One more time. Color, red, important. Okay. Great. Here we are. Um, here. All right, your turn, chat. B8 to C6. So B8, um, C6, that would move the knight out here. Uh, G8 to G6 would move this knight. Both pretty standard moves. Um, or, or sorry, G8 to F6. 
G8 to G6 is not a valid move. <laughs> um, so really the main two things to vote for are uh, B8 to C6 or G8 to F6. G'day, Lechi. How's it going? Yeah, it, it will log it. We'll see it in the console after it. Uh, there's 60 seconds. After the 60 seconds are up, uh, it's going to send it. Yeah, so making move B8 to C6. Uh, we then have an updated game state. And uh, now it's my turn. <laughs> I've been pretty good lately. I haven't streamed that often. I've only streamed like uh, once a week for the past month or so. Um. I'm going to try to start streaming more next week. All right, your turn again, chat. D76. The statement move was made. Oh, I mean, this is says this says making move because it's calling the API. Um, and then this says that because the API response was successful. Yeah. Yeah, so we, we tapped into the the, uh, the Lee Chess API. And I guess technically I should change my category back to chess. Um, well, not that. Oh, man. Um, Yes, yeah, so we're tapping into the, the Lee Chess API uh, to accept game invites. Um, and then we're also listening to Twitch chat and uh, people can vote. And then uh, whatever move got the most votes will sent, be sent to the Lee Chess API and it will actually move that piece. Uh, and I did it all in JavaScript. Yeah. Okay. Um, now. Now what? Develop, 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 develop. I'm going to do this. That's my move. Chat's turn. You have 60 seconds to decide. <laughs> uh, D7, D6. Oh, that's a good move. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna threaten my bishop. Is, is it though? No, because D7, D6 is not, it's not backed up by anything. I could kill it and then there's no threat. And then I could move out of the way. Um, G8, F6, G8, F6, move the knight out. Okay. See you later, Fab. Thanks for being here. Sometimes I wonder if chat goes full random. Well, I think the thing is there are a lot of people in chat that don't know how to play chess. And so they're potentially just voting for the thing that has the most votes already. Um, yeah. Let's get that queen out. No, I mean, you should you should move the king out, I think. Definitely a strong strong chess move. Um, to get, get your king out early. I want to move the horsey. Yeah, the horsey moved. Um, all right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and castle. Here I go. Chat's turn. Yeah, and so somebody asked earlier about like how would we actually validate the moves. Uh, essentially, we would need to take this list of moves that have happened in the game, and um, uh, like logically replay the game with all of the pieces and all of the piece logic, like. Bishops can move a certain way, knights can move a certain way. Uh, and then we have the current state of the board. And then we would need to look at every play that chat has asked to do. We need to look at everyone and make sure that it is a valid move. Um, I guess we could do that eventually. There's a library chess.js that helps with that. Um, yeah, advanced chess techniques, castling. <laughs> and see you unfair. Thanks for being here. Chat.send, available moves, math.random. Pretty much. <laughs> so E7 to E5. Uh, bringing out the pawn. All right. Let's think about this. Uh, 
Quick stretch. <laughs> slowly, <laughs> slowly getting destroyed. <laughs> um. Castle soon, boys. Okay. Um. Yeah, here's the thing. I've done this before. If I if I take this pawn, then that prevents you from castling. Castle, that's a good trick. <laughs> F3, G5. It's not a bad move. Yeah, not a bad move at all. Okay, great. <laughs> is this going to be another quick one? <laughs> All right, um, some possible moves. F6 to G4, D6 to D5. Uh, D6, D5, that would, that would block the bishop here. It's a pretty good move. Um, H7 to H6. H7, that, yeah, that would uh, attack the knight. Uh, C8 to E6 is winning. Um, C8 to e6 would would protect with the bishop um gogo -Go is mentioning c7 to e6 uh, that's the, that's what they did it's a pretty decent move because it attacks my bishop here who's not protected um we could go bishop for bishop let's trade <laughs> we're trading bishops okay your turn chat you have 60 seconds to go um, the main move probably is to take out my bishop with the pawn. <laughs> Just handed a bishop to death. Uh, potentially. Okay, so f7 to e6, um, would take out the bishop with the pawn. Everyone's voting to take out the bishop. Is anybody going to vote to just move the king forward one? Just move, just move the king forward. <laughs> What's up, Greg? Oh, uh, no, I had a, I had a flex day, so I didn't have to go into work today. But we, we made it so that I can play ch uh, chess with chat. After 60 seconds, it'll choose the most voted on move, and then it will literally move the piece. That's cons it is consensus. Take that bishop out. Um, I, I, don't, I think I might have a chess.com account, but I'm, I've mainly just used Lee Chess. There we go. Okay. Uh, I am not validating moves. Uh, we talked about we'd probably do that next time. So I've said this before. I am no, I am I don't know a lot about chess, but I do know if I take this pawn, it, my knight is not being attacked by anything. So it's kind of like a free pawn. I'm gonna take a free pawn. All right, chat. It's your turn. You have sixty seconds. <laughs> uh, D8 to D7. Um. Yeah, it's a fork. So am I... Yeah, I think this. So it's attacking those two. It's also attacking that. And that. But the queen's got to get out of harm's way for sure. Should probably move, you should probably move the queen, chat. Uh, or just move your king ahead one. Um, my rating's really low. So apparently uh, here against um, the bot, it says 1467, but... It's, I think it's like sub 1100. It's less than 1100 in competitive play. Um, D8, D7. <laughs> no, don't move, don't move the queen. That's, you definitely don't want to move the queen. Uh, D8, E7. <laughs> Good job, chat. You saved the queen. Um, now what? Why not? Let's just take that bishop out. And if you kill my knight, you can't castle. So we didn't we didn't actually test my code to see if chat was able to um E7. Oh, oh, oh. 
the move that was made. Yeah. But um, we didn't test my code to see if castling would work. Like technically, I think if you said like E8 to G8, it would castle. Oh, you're right. You can castle long because you're not in check if you want to. So you could do um, E8 to C8, right? E8, C8 would be to castle long. Um, H8 to F8 would kill the knight with the castle. After we kill the knight, though. <laughs> yeah, so um, H8 to F8 is winning. That's here. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. I'm going to move right about there. Your turn, chat. E8 to C8. So they're going to attempt to castle. Castle long. Is that the official uh, chess terminology? Uh, everybody wants to castle. What is A8? To E8? Oh. I don't think that would be a valid move. E8 to F7. Yeah, bring your king out. The king wants to play. Wow, it worked. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Our code, did, we, we castled and our code didn't break. Okay. Um, that's, that's exciting. Uh, let's go ahead and do something like this. I think. Yes, that's the move I want to make. Your turn. You have sixty seconds. <laughs> um, you all get, you feel free to chat strategy in the chat. Um, C six to D four. That would yeah. I mean, this is this spot is not being attacked by anything, so to move the knight here. Um, that's a thing that has the most votes, but also B7 to B5. B7? B5. Yeah, yeah. So to attack the knight with uh, the pawn here. Another possible move. Uh, if there's a tie, I don't know which one it's going to choose. <laughs> uh, B7 to B5, uh, I really don't want you all to do that. You should definitely vote for C6 to D4. Whoa, it won. <laughs> Hello, uh, Punkix. Welcome to the show. Uh, and now that you've done that, I'm going to do this. Bishop to g5. Huh. Well, I guess I took out both of your bishops, right? Yeah, and so I, I thought about this early on. Right now, you can't change your mind. Like you, it only um, only your first vote counts, and mainly the reason being, I didn't necessarily want some people's votes to influence other people's votes. Because then that, I mean, if we do that, that's like real chat strategy. Um, we'll probably do that eventually. I don't know. D seven to A four. Um, D seven. A. Oh. That's a completely unprotected knight. You're totally right. <laughs> uh, that knight is about to die. Um, well, actually, no, it's not. Um, you're about to sacrifice your queen. <laughs> but the queen isn't being protected. You <laughs> traded a knight for a queen. No. No. Um, gone. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> uh, 
Um, that's actually really funny. <laughs> I, think this is, I think this is what happened when a collective hive mind attempts to play the game. Um, yeah, I think it's a good play to to check this check this queen, at attack it with the pawn. Uh, but boat's gambit is that what this is called? <laughs> is that a real thing? Um, we didn't add offering a draw, and honestly, the the docks are really confusing. Um, I'll wait to show you that in a second. Okay, so d4 to e2, um, d4, e2, that's good. You're checking checking the king. I think that's a good play. It's a good play. And I'm going to lose this bishop. My, own, my only option is to get out of here. So, it's your turn, chat. Um, well, I'll let you look at the board before I make my next, next move. I mean, you probably want to do e2 to uh, c1, right? Take out the bishop. Um, timer of five seconds and take the vote that has the most duplicates. So what we're doing right now is um, you can only vote once, but if two people vote for the same thing, then the count is increased. And then uh, whichever move had the most votes is the one we send to the API. So right now it's either, yeah, right now F6 to G4. Um, if there are no other votes that come in within 60 seconds, that's going to be the winner because uh, that's received four votes in the chat. Um, yeah. Yep. Uh, I mean, we made the chat today. You can, you can re rewind five hours ago. Um, and see that we made it. Oh, well. Interesting move, chat. <laughs> E2, C1, come on. Um, but what I was going to mention is the, the, the Lee Chess docks. Um, are a little confusing on uh, offering a draw. So if you look at uh, bot, make a bot move. So you make a post request here, move slash the move that you want to make, and then there's a query parameter which is offer, offering draw, um, which is weird to me because like why would you send a move if you're offering a draw? So like what do you send in place of the move if offering draw is true? I don't know. Oh no no, it's it's an unlimited game. There's there's no time limit. That's why I'm that's why I'm yapping at you. Uh yeah, so uh our work or my 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 company, uh we have called what's called Flex Fridays. And so every other Friday we get to take that day off. Um and we basically split the company in two. So half the company takes one Friday off and the other half the company takes the other Friday off. If the draws refuse, the move is made prop. Oh. That makes it that actually makes a lot of sense. I couldn't I couldn't get that from reading the docs though. But yeah, so you say we're gonna make this move, but we're offering a draw, but if you decline the draw, make that move. Yeah. Yeah, that that makes sense then. Okay. Do I get my bishop out of harm's way? I think so. I mean, am I in trouble here? Yeah, let's checkmate. <laughs> right? If I if I don't Oh no no no, cuz I cuz I could take with uh take with the rook. Um Yeah. So I'm just gonna do that. All right, your turn, chat. 60 seconds. F8 to F2, guys. Um, F... Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, okay, F8. Uh, yeah, well, at this point, it would be F8 to F3. But uh, I kind of just protected here, because, yeah, I totally forgot that this rook is attacking. 
here. <laughs> so right now F8, F3 is winning. Uh, F8, F3. They're gonna they're gonna sacrifice their rook. Apparently. Uh, <laughs> this is sad. This is this is beautiful. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, F8, F3, F8, F3 has six votes. Okay, friends. Um, I can't take the knight. What do you mean? Still alive. What's up, Murdoch? <laughs> um, worth it. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't. Oh, oh, no, no. I need to offer a take back. <laughs> I can't offer a take back. We didn't code offering. I clicked the wrong thing. Oh no. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. All right. It's, it's your turn chat. Um, <laughs> no backsies. <laughs> a checkmate in one after that. Oh man. No, I can stop. I can stop it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, G4 to F2. Wait. Oh, yeah, that's a checkmate. That's a checkmate. If you, um... <laughs> I messed up. <laughs> I have lost the game. Um, we get, to, we get to test my logic, though. Uh... <laughs> it worked! Look, uh, game finish. So we got that. Uh, winner is black. And then we get stream was canceled, probably meaning that our uh, our uh, um, our cancellation token for the Axios request got sent. <laughs> Great job, everyone! Great job. Hmm. Awesome. Yeah. So if I didn't make that mistake, I would have taken here. Let's, okay. Yeah. So uh, people were telling me to do this earlier. We can go into. Um, was it analysis board? So, uh, if I <laughs> if I wouldn't have made a mistake and if I would have actually taken here, um, then I don't know. You probably would have taken the bishop, right? Talk me through it, chat. What would you have done if I would have done that? Probably that. G uh four to F six So to to move move your knight out Yeah I think yeah yeah so uh because if I would have taken then you're we're really close to giving allowing this guy to to make his way up here for uh to start causing some trouble. And if you move your knight here that blocks him. Like that. Um, second horse to pin the knight. And then I probably would have done something like this. And then... I don't know. <laughs> um oh hey Murdoch taking half shifts. Um you're supposed to be home, but health is more important. Seeing a cardiologist. Well I hope everything works out. Uh took your rook with the pawn. H seven, H six. Oh yeah, yeah, that's good. Threaten the bishop. I think at this point I probably still would have just taken. Um and then you take here. And I take here, and then you try to bring your knight back to help defend, and then I do something like this, and then you do something like, I uh, know you don't, yeah, 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 maybe you do that, maybe you don't, I don't know. And I do something like, um, 
Actually, I don't know what you would do. Something like that. <laughs> and I do that. And then you, I don't know, but eventually I win. Like that. <laughs> Cool. All right, I'm done. Uh, this has been fun, everyone. Um, I'll go ahead and push this code up to GitHub um, so you can laugh at how horrible and um, uh, spaghetti-like it is. Um, Lie chess, Twitch, bot. Enough time for one more game? No, I, I got to go. I, I mean, I've been live for six hours at this point, so yeah. Well, thank you, Paranoid Android. Cool. Yeah, and you're welcome, Ryan Hawkins. Thanks for being here. Uh, let's create a new git repo. Git init. We're not committing any secrets. That's good. Uh, let me just add a readme really quick. Oh, no, it's a, it's a public repo. Um, oh, did I click private on it? I'll make it public if it's private. It should be public. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, thank you, Leak Geek. Thanks for being here. Code spaghetti with the code baguettes. Yes. <laughs> uh, let's add a quick readme. Um, lie chess twitch bot. Uh, quick and dirty twitch bot that allows... Twitch chat to play chess against a streamer on like chess. Um, install dependencies, copy the env sample file to .env, update with your values. Um, start it up. Uh, invite the bot to a game. Cool. That's it. <laughs> Change my light chess username to W3CJ. <laughs> so the bot will accept. Oh, we need to parameterize that. You're right. Because we do have a few other... We have uh, three environment variables. You can specify which channel does it listen... Uh, for messages, what is the Lychess bot name? Uh, what your what is your bot token? Um, and then the other thing we didn't parameterize is uh, it only accepts <laughs> it only accepts games, <laughs> challenge games from me. Uh, we'll add that to the to do uh, to do parameterize your what token? Uh, your bot token, uh, <laughs> not your your bot token. Okay. Um, and also, I mean, I'll give this thing the MP MIT license. Um, um, copyright 2020 Coding Garden. Beautiful. Wait. Why did the package.json change? Oh, because it put the license as MIT. That makes sense. Melky Dev! Welcome. I'm actually I'm ending the stream, but welcome, friends, and thank you for that raid. Anthony writes code. What's up, dude? And hello, that noob. Welcome to the show. Um, you've arrived at the coding garden. Uh, we're just wrapping up, but I'll, I'll show you what we built today. It was pretty fun. No, it, it's fine. <laughs> we'll send you somewhere nice. <laughs> no, I, I can't shoot. I got to go eat dinner. Yeah, I got things to do. Raid Chang. Yeah, what's up, Shun Ones? Thanks for being here. Um, cool. I'll show you what we built. We have no remote. <laughs> we need to push it up. And the Alt F4 stream. What's up? Thank you for that that resub. Um, thanks for being here. Oh, oh yeah. See you, see you later, Milky Dev. Thanks for the raid. 
A triple raid, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so many stream raids, I haven't felt this unwanted. Um, are you saying because the streamer keeps pushing you into another stream? I think it's a positive thing because you're being sent to very nice places. Um, I, be I believe this repo is public. Let me know if you all can access this. Um, but this is what we built today. It's a, a nice little bot that listens for moves in the Twitch chat and then sends those moves to the Lee Chess API so that Twitch chat can play me in chess. Uh, right now, the record is one and one. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good, the Alt F4 stream. Thanks for being here. It's private? No! <laughs> Oh, yeah, it says it right there, private. <laughs> All right, I'll fix it. Um, wait, is it possible to make it? Yeah, change visibility. This is a potentially destructive action. <laughs> um, here we go. All right, should be public now. Cool, but uh, it's a nice little bot. It talks to the LeeChess API. So on LeeChess, um, you can create a bot account. Um, the bot account we created was called uh, Samwise Gardener. Where'd he go? Um, He's there, but um, <laughs> we created we created a bot user account. That bot user account is listening uh, for uh, game invites. Um, so we were using, I think, challenges and then stream incoming events. So it's listening for when it's challenged to a game. And when it is challenged to a game, if the person challenging it is me, it accepts that invite. Um, and then it listens for events in the game. Um, well, no, so uh, we know when um, the game has started, and then we get uh, game events. So we initially get the full state of the game, which is um, who the players are, what side they're on, all that good stuff. And then we also get the game state, um, which says what moves have been played. And initially, no moves have been played, um, so it determines if it's if it's the bot's turn. And if it's the bot's turn, it listens in chat. You can send moves, and then after one minute, it sends the most voted move to the API. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Yeah, click the link. Uh, the code's messy. <laughs> we wrote it today, but it works. <laughs> we, we've played two games with chat, so that's been fun. But yeah, a simple connection, anonymous connection to uh, uh, Twitch IRC. Um, and then we're hitting a few endpoints for accepting or declining challenges, uh, making a specific move. Uh, what was interesting and what some of you may have never seen before is this thing called New Line Delimited JSON. I've never worked with this, um, but it's basically like a one-way socket. You can, it, it, it's it, it's weird. Um, it, only weird because I've never done something like this before, but basically we make a request that is of type stream and that request basically never closes. The request just stays open all the time. And then when the server has a new event, it basically sends it through that existing connection. Now, I don't think this is server sent events. I don't think this is long polling. This is just, I don't know if anybody has come up with a, a like what it, it is new line delimited JSON. <laughs> it's indie JSON, yes, <laughs> that's what it is. Um, and so basically we say that we have a stream and then we, we're using a for await to get the data. And basically each chunk of data is a JSON object that is a specific event. Like a move was made or a game has been started, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, we have some to do. It's probably gonna break. <laughs> um, and then we're listening for chat messages. We're making sure right now we're just doing basic validations of the moves. We're just making sure that it's in the right format. A future addition would be to pull in a library that where you can pass it the game state and all the moves that have been made, and then uh, determine if a given move is a valid move on that board. Right now we're not doing that. We're just making sure it, if it fits the format. We try it, um, and um, here we pick the top most voted move and then send it to the API. And if the API didn't like it, then that probably means that it was an invalid move or a badly formatted move. And then we give chat 
more time to vote again. But eventually, if it was successful, it they we send the move to the API, and that actually moves the piece on the board, which is pretty cool. That's about it. You can check it out. <laughs> okay. Um, do I know Blender? I'm not familiar with Blender, no. Um, if you post in our Discord, somebody might be able to help you. I don't I don't know that we do have a general help channel. Check it out. Um, okay, I'm gonna go, we're gonna raid somebody. But wherever we go, show them love, drop a follow if you like what they're doing. Um, I will most likely stream on Monday morning. Uh, if you check out uh, twitch.tv slash coding garden slash schedule, I'm gonna update this. It's not updated right now, but I am gonna update this with my schedule next week. I'm hoping for at least two streams next week, but you might get more. Um, and that's it. Thank you everyone for hanging out with me today. We were we were live a long time, and there were a lot of you, and uh, we had a good time, and I appreciate you. Yeah, thank you, InstaFluff. Thanks for being here. Yeah, shout out to InstaFluff, member of our live coders team. Um, here's your raid messages. If you are a sub, that's your raid message. Uh, if you're not a sub, this is your raid message. Right about there. Great. Yes. Yes. Um, that's pretty much it. <laughs> I'm going to go now. I appreciate you all. Thanks for being here. I'm glad we got something working. It's always fun to get something working. And we can always add new features in, in the future and stuff like that. Yeah, you have a good weekend too, uh, Sequel Gortster. And Kavasho, hello. We're heading out, but it's good to see you. Um, cool. Check the schedule. All that good stuff. And uh, stay awesome wherever you are in the world. Have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, or night. And until next time, here's this. You go to the bots page, uh, you'll see the three there. I actually owe you a couple more in there. We have an automatic reloader and other stuff like that. Uh, the holy cow coding garden has an arsenal of people. Uh, hide. Uh, okay, I can't hide. Hello, coding garden. You are amazing. Thank you for the raid, my friend. I appreciate it. 
Sanico, thank you so much for the follow, my friend. You guys are amazing. You brought all these friends. I, I, all my friends are, most of my friends are plants. So I have a lot of friends. They just don't go anywhere. Um, so anyway, thank you, Cody Garden. I appreciate bringing your friends. Um, you guys are amazing. I hope uh, Cody Garden made you guys super smart. Um, I can't guarantee you're going to get that from this stream, but you can always take your vengeance out on me. And that's what most people do in here. So hello, my friends. Uh, how is the weather? Hey, Tavarian, nice to see how it is snowy. So we just upgraded Pixelbot to make it high speed. Uh, so like, um, so uh, uh, what was I gonna say? I have no idea. I just work here. Uh, oh, um, so here, oh, and I drew this today. Uh, run Jeff. So that's me running. So we, upgrade, we actually upgraded Pixelbot uh, so that uh, it goes high speed now. So the key was to move away from an Arduino and the library I was using and move into a...